So you you figured out that you wanted to go in a different path. Was it from having that moment of like, okay, now is the time to like ask why? Where was that moment where you said, okay, like trying to like be this like character from this Instagram post mm-hmm. or whatever? When did you like make that like no, that this is where I'm supposed to be? Um, I had noticed that I was going into a like I was having a pattern of like self destruction. Okay. And I noticed that I was repeating mistakes. And I mm. do not like repeating mistakes. So right. I was like, okay, girl, this is our like fourth time. That's a lot. Even okay. for us, that's a lot. So one day I remember like realizing like, oh, this is you. Like your life's not happening to you. You're creating your life. And like, this is what you decided to do. And I was like, oh, I'm embarrassed. And I was like, oh my yeah. God, like I'm ashamed of my life. And I didn't realize until that moment, like, I made this like you make your bed, you got to lay in it. Yeah. I made my bed and it was disgusting. Yeah, I think so. How are you? Doing pretty good. What about you? Doing pretty good. Can't complain. I am feeling. How am I feeling? I'm feeling like a bit tired. I won't I won't lie to you. So I am feeling a little bit brain fogged. I think I told you that in DMs, but it's been this whole week. So just forgive me if I slur my words or mumble a lot. Look, after last night, I cannot judge anybody, okay? That that stream you mean? The stream you're doing? Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, I do I that. Can't judge anyone. I do it all the time. I do like test streams where no one can see me and I'm always like testing things. It's cuz you know what? The audience will lie to you. Don't trust your my audience is a lying audience and they lie to me. They're always like, "Brittany, your audio's great." And then I'll go listen to it and I'm like, "It's literally horrible." But they don't know cuz mm. they're all listening on different devices. So that's the worst part is like you can't even tell how to have good audio because it depends on what you're judging it on. Yeah, I mean, the last three streams I did, my some people from my audience were like, bro, you're muted, bro, you're muted. And I'm like, what the? And it, it got so bad last night. I was I was audible, wicked everyone else muted. So, I mean, what? like, yeah, I mean, it's because I honestly, I'm just lazy. I'm willing to admit I'm lazy. I haven't I haven't mapped out all my tech the way I was supposed to. So. I got what I deserved. You know what? It, it's a learning now. curve. You're doing really good, though, for yeah. somebody who just started off doing everything. So, I mean, it's a part of the learning curve. Appreciate that. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm excited. I would love to hear your thoughts. Did you watch the H3H3 Fresh and Fit conversation? Bro, I've <laughs> watched it. for this, I watched it. Yeah. I've watched it three times because I watched my own stream to see how, like, things were going. I watched Tomfoolery and I watched Papa Gut. So, now... I have seen that stream so many times. I'm over it. I watched them all in times two. What did you think? So, give me a second. Because... <laughs> okay, okay, hold up, hold up. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to talk, but I'm like, I'm... <laughs> it was a like. You ever seen that shit of um? You ever see like a Mexican standoff? Yeah. That's them. The Bro. whole stream, just like I got you. No, I got you. No, what do you remember when you said this? No, remember when you said that? Why do you think they're doing it? Tell me for like for real, for real. Why did they even do that collab? Okay, I you said that it was like for the clicks and for the money. Mm-hmm. I think that's like maybe twenty percent, mm-hmm. but I think eighty percent of it is like I hate this motherfucker. I'm gonna get him. I think because you know Ethan, he's he's really good at yo. Come on my stream. We'll we'll have a talk. And then he springs like yeah. when you were twelve and you stepped on a crack and broke someone's mother's back. <laughs> like he brings up all of this stuff that you forgot you did. Like remember when yeah. you did that? I swear Ethan's more federal than Myron, and Myron was mm-hmm. an actual federal agent. Ethan just bringing up stuff. I'm like, how does he even like? Remember when you deleted 20 videos last week? I'm like, you're watching that? So it was, uh, I think Ethan was just, you know, having his monthly uh, remember when you did this confrontation. But what a decision to make. Like, I think that's what confuses me about this space. Like, I still mm-hmm. can't get over it. And I, everyone, okay, first of all, I laugh that the audience keeps mixing up Abbott and Preach and Fresh and Fit. That will never not be funny to me. Like, the comment section on my video yeah. is like, your relationship with Myron is why you're biased. And I was like, Myron? And I'm like, what? And they're like, the reason you like Fresh and Fit. I'm like, who? What? And I'm like, what are you talking about? And I'm realizing like, okay, what I don't understand about this space is like, why would Ethan not talk to Abin Preach, but would talk to Fresh and Fit in any way justifiable in his bubble? Like in his worldview, what is the allowance for that? To platform an, a sec- oh, an essayer, he thinks is an essayer, basically give him what? F- how many views collectively? They had like 36,000 on Fresh and Fit's end and like 45,000 on Ethan's. 
Mm -hmm. Bro, how is that even make it make sense? Yeah, it was like an arena full of people, if not more. I think uh, I think Ob and Priest just aren't vulnerable. What are you going to yeah. catch him with? Yeah, remember yeah, when yeah. you laughed at blah 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 or like yeah like they're not vulnerable fresh and fit are very vulnerable they've had on nick fuentes they've had their little kkk moment with sneeko fresh and fit are very vulnerable to ethan's like hey remember when you did this and plus they've had beef for the hot like for the longest minute like sure. this was a perfect time for ethan to be like come here just just come here and let me and let me smack you upside the head when you're not looking that was that's really what i think it is because i've been preach they just aren't vulnerable. They can't be they can't be caught on anything. So Yeah. No, that makes sense to me. I, I do think that's ultimately what it is as well, where, you know, again, I think Ab and Preach have a principled issue with mm -hmm. Ethan. And Ethan has I think what he thinks is a principled issue. But you would think that in and this is why I don't know why y'all are in politics. Like this is why politics annoys me. Cause it feels like if we have issues on principles, we should be talking about that. And talking about the best way to have like some sort of balance, but the people aren't talking to people. They're they're creating fights with people that they are so far like so far in terms of principles that they're never going. It's not like they're ever going to change each other's minds. Imagine the day Myron's like, Ethan, you're right. Hmm. I'm gonna change. Like that's not gonna happen. And Ethan's not gonna change. It's right. not like all of a sudden Ethan's gonna be like, I'm a red pillar now. Like that's not gonna happen. So I've been preach are like scary i think because they are an opportunity to change there might be change there might because they're just enough in the like reasonable you know what i mean so from like a i guess from yeah. that's why i think i'm annoyed at politics a little bit because i'm looking at them like you don't want a solution you just want to argue oh yeah i mean it's, it's wartime you know it, it was 100 percent wartime like i said i've been preached they're not vulnerable and on top of that they're not oh, i'm not gonna say they don't participate in drama but like they're just not as wild and out there. And their beef yeah. with Ethan isn't as serious. Fresh and Fit have been, well, Fresh, well, no, Myron specifically has been accused of some crazy stuff by Ethan. So that beef is real. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, of course, you know, with uh, what happened on that stream, I mean, the beef was 100% real. It's great for views, for one. It uh, It's a good dunk. It makes mm. Ethan look really, really good. I mean, he's had pretty good, I mean, the one with Pearl was crazy. That yeah. was a really good dunk that he got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he got a little bit too excited, a little bit too cocky, because at the beginning, like, he, he, he was a little bit shaky there, like, Myron and, and, and Fresh were getting him in the beginning. So, I think it was just simple, calculated, like, look, I'm going to bring these guys on. I've got the drop on them. I know they, they deleted this video. They said this, they did that, and I'm just going to humiliate them. And it's yeah. it's like... Maybe it's just the entertainment or I just don't I don't believe that everyone's spending every day trying to save the world. I think there are times where people just want to engage in just ridiculous like foolishness on, on the Internet. You know, what yeah, I mean? I mean, I guess that's kind of almost like a preference. I think it's the virtue signaling that gets like me so annoyed, but also like, of course, like humans are going to human. So like, what are you yeah. going to do about it? You know what I mean? Um, do you have any yeah. thoughts about that uh, live stream that you want to go over? Anything that stood out to you? I think what's I think what stood out to me the most is like um it's like uh what is like where are we like where are we going as as streamers where we're like constantly trying to destroy each other with like is it is it um because you would never really I don't want to say you don't see stuff like this in real life but people are a lot more hesitant to play the kind of games like Ethan I feel like his accusation toward Myron was really really stretched bro and I'm sitting here and I'm like you're playing with someone's life and you're exacerbating and really stretching at you're you're basically the one making the accusation you're basically the one saying she didn't say it but I'll say it for her you did this and I guess um what I was wondering is like what what I don't want to I mean, we could just say humans are going to human, but like, what is it about our like specific mm. space that makes us so bloodthirsty? Because I know you've definitely linked it to like political streamers tend to be a little bit more devious or well, a little bit Well, they want the win, like... right? The win feels so good. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie. Even when I see Chad, they're like, Brittany's on fire right now. I'm like, oh my God, thank you. <laughs> you know, you get right. that. Like, I mean, I get it. You get that like praise and you're like, I am on fire right now. And you're like, yeah, I'm so smart. And then you're like, what am I doing? And you, it's all, it's a little bit like that. But I, I do wonder, mm -hmm. I've been thinking about my own content too. Like I want to make sure that my content isn't just tearing people down because I'm so critical and I do like, I literally tear apart people's videos and I don't want yeah. to be negative when people watch my videos, but I want people to feel like, oh, like I never thought about it that way. That's what I want mm -hmm. from my audience. 
But I feel like mm -hmm. Ethan and Fresh and Fit was less like, oh, I never thought about it that way. And were more like, like feeding into their audience's like need to like target someone and hate somebody. So I feel like in that regard, they obviously, it was like an arena. It was literally like a fucking gladiators and the audience was mm -hmm. bloodthirsty, bro. Like bloodthirsty. Just watching Ethan's re Ethan's viewers reacting on my channel, which is so fair. Like I understand their perspective, but like they keep saying things like she pushed him off Myron. Like she pushed Myron off her. Like that never happened. I've watched that, that live stream now three times mm -hmm. and nowhere did anyone say she pushed. She didn't even say that. She said, I had my hands on his chest as if to indicate I'm not into him. And I was like, so I was like, like this, like on his shoulders yeah. or like, or like chest? this, like, yeah, like, yeah, were like, you like this? and again, yeah. I don't want women or men in vulnerable situations where they're going to have to like fight for their life, but I want them to know mm -hmm. the difference between what is like you have to know the context of the situation you're in just socially just to be appropriate just to know what you're doing with your life and so for her to say like this isn't what it is for me but for ethan to say like oh i'm gonna say what it is like i'm trying to figure mm -hmm. out is that ever appropriate as well for ethan to decide it was essay even if she said it wasn't that's interesting to me like oh that made me stop like is that ever ethical for him to decide it is essay I think it's just fuel by smoke. Like I think um, Ethan has serious smoke from Myron. <laughs> I think Bro. they both have some serious beef. And I think Ethan thought, you know, this is a prime opportunity to destroy you. You know, this is a story that sounds because I'm. I was watching the the video that that Ethan did, and I'm like, I'm looking at his 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 facial expressions and his body language, and I'm looking at the face of someone who thinks they finally got the the silver bullet for their enemy. Like I'm yeah. seeing the little like the. Well, sometimes when I watch academics, he's like this too, like where he's like, he'll like instigate in a really funny and humorous way where it's like, oh, tell me more. Like Ethan had this really funny like body language where it's like, it's, it doesn't sound like you're listening to someone talk about being assaulted. It sounds like you're listening to someone giving you the info you need to finally totally. get rid of one of your enemies. To so I was like totally. watching it and I was dying laughing because I'm like, I can't, it's like, I'm taking this woman seriously, but it's so hard to like take this conversation seriously because I'm looking at Ethan with his beanie on and no, he's literally. just smiling and he's all like, yeah. Yeah, like you know he's that like? That like really really yeah he's he's got this little like faint little like <laughs> pleasure in his face and i'm like oh you this is just wartime this is just 100. this is ammo for you so i, don't, I mean like i guess because i guess the world's just a fucked up place because I, I the fact that we've gotten this but you don't really do we though i'm i'm over here confused because it's like we've seen maybe we've seen more chaos in other spaces than this one I don't think I think their beef is the craziest in the political like socials. Well, well, it's hard to say. You know, I read this. Um, I don't remember what what I was watching documentary. Who knows? But I remember them saying like the forefathers themselves used to put articles about each other out and spread gossip about one another to win elections. I was like, mm -hmm. man, these drama queens, but the founding fathers, the forefathers, mm -hmm. the people wooden teeth bitches. What do we talk about? And I'm sitting here like, what is this? And I think there's something funny about that. Like there's this idea that we think in the past people had more decorum or people were more mature. I see no. no indication of that. <laughs> I see zero indication of that. And so I think the aesthetic is different. I think every year we think the younger people are dominating the aesthetic. But I don't think that we were ever more mature before, or less mature now. I think different parts of culture are being put at the forefront of our observations. And we're consuming it in the same way. Every I, I'm old enough now that I remember hearing the same complaints from my parents but it's like generationally these young people mm -hmm. they're ruining stuff these young people they're ruining stuff these young people and i'm like huh okay so it's always just like the next person oh, and the old people they're ruining stuff the old people they gave us this the old people and i'm like okay that's fair that's very human i think the same mm -hmm. thing happens in spaces like this where they want to think they're breaking cycles but they're just repeating them with like different outfits and I fall, yeah. like even I want to fall into it because it sells like even my own brand. I've been more general. I've talked about bigger stories. I've talked about more celebrities and a way to bring in a more general audience because, you know, views are up. The bag is bagging. And I'm like, OK, let's go. But that yeah. means that the audience is going to be less introspective by nature because they're coming for a fight. They want to know what happened between Nicki Minaj and Cardi B and Nicki Minaj and this person and Nicki. Ma they want to know the drama. And so that's kind of really the thing about humans that I've had to radically, radically accept is that the, like the world is a reflection of us as a whole and the whole is like what it is. This is life. Mm -hmm. And this is where we are right now. 
And that's going to be reflected down into our subcultures, whether we like to think we're different than the majority or not. Yeah, I mean, it's um, it's like uh, the Bible verse, there's nothing new under the sun. I mean, in the past, people would just have their opponents killed. Like, you yeah. know, you're annoying. You know, tomorrow when you wake up, you know, goons are going to break into your crib that. and stab you. I think Putin still I mean, yeah, pe people still do that today. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, in, in, in the West, in America, you know, yeah. you can't get your hands that dirty anymore. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, get, I think the the closest we get to it is like like rappers like catching each other at, yeah. at, at like clubs or whatever and like swing on you. but like outside of that i mean now like beef between two high profile people has to be far more hands off and more manipulative so you start to see you know even more you know i don't know i mean like i don't know what to describe what ethan did because I i'm looking at his body language as he's doing it i'm like oh this is a dangerous motherfucker like this is a guy who if you beef with him this guy will pull out all the stops to get rid of you. This man will make shit up. He'll take yeah. something and just stretch it as far as he can. And um, it doesn't look like Fresh and Fit are capable of that yet. Or that they're, because uh, they were always like, you know, if this had happened to you, you know what we would have done? We would have said, well, let's wait for the evidence. Mm. Um, Ethan seems in, it seems like he's in a place where he's a... Uh, <laughs> like he's just like, look, let's get rid of these guys. We're going to get them. And we, we see it with like how we interested Alper and Preach. It's yeah, like... Yeah. um. You said blah, blah, blah. Oh, really, Ethan? Have you watched it? No, I haven't watched it. But you, you know, it's, uh, he's an interesting character. I mean, I made a video about him one time and like the goons came for me in the comments. This was like a year ago. Mm -hmm. Um, the goons came for me in the comments section. So yeah, the H, that H3 camp is very, very, uh, they're, they're, they're a little scary over there. They're Look, and I like H3 as a Britney. Like I do watch the podcasts and everything, but I will say it is not easy to watch them without being like, girl, like you fight so dirty, girl. And I think about that. Now, I wondered because I, I think the feedback that I'm trying to understand about that bubble is like, it's a heavily Gen Z bubble. It's a heavily girl bubble. And young girls are feeling very vindicated in their representation for these types of situations. But I think it's obviously like in a way that I don't love in the same way that I don't love the representation boys are feeling with Andrew Tate. Like I'm not very happy about that. You know, I'm not stoked that like our youth are excited that these are their represent like their represent their represent representatives. Like that's not yeah, very exciting no. to me. But then I wondered, OK, do they have good intent you know, do they have good intent? Oh, like big news, Rashad. I don't know if you heard, but I no longer have any brothers that are Andrew Tate fans. Oh, really? Uh, the t the times have changed. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's the way of putting it. Okay. I love it. They they said they're over the character. They're like, man, I'm so over this character, bro. I'm so over the character. Everyone's in a ca everyone's a character. I'm so sick of it. I just want someone honest. Like I want someone honest and real. And I was like, yeah, like, mm. where's the, like, real down to earth? Now, they're Abbott and Preach fans, so, you know, close enough. You know, they're happy okay. with them. I'm happy with that. You know, that makes me happy. Mm. But it is one of those things where I think there is sort of, like, a character people get stuck in. And they play it, whether it's Ethan or Andrew Tate. And then it gets them into trouble, whether we like it or not. Ethan, I don't, I would feel very bad about myself if I accuse somebody of something that they absolutely did not do. But I don't know why mm. Ethan feels okay doing it, except is there, and tell me if this is true, is there a Gen Z bubble? Is there a reality in which that is essay? Mm. I don't, because you always find that one person that's like, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that is. But it's also dependent upon like how you feel about the person being accused. It's one of those mm -hmm. stories where it's like, it's not so black and white to where you we can all agree. Mm -hmm. It's really dependent upon like, um, do you like Myron or do you dislike Myron? And if you dislike Myron, you're probably more likely to say, yeah, Myron's guilty. If you like Myron, you're going to sit there and say, he, he never did anything wrong. And if you're ambivalent about him, then you're kind of like, well, we'll see. I don't think, I think that's like you said before generations aren't that different from one another in the sense that like um i think people are really similar in terms of reasonability mm. it's like the uh it's like that it's like um it's like that saying a person is smart but people are stupid like when you round people up into a groove and you start sectioning them off by ideology yeah. then you start to see people like stepping far away from reason and rationale and like common sense into the realm of like that ideology i don't fuck with that yeah. so i hate the guy and i'm gonna sit there and accuse him of whatever yeah ethan's an interesting player in the game because like no one else seems to be like do at his level we've seen some people pull what he's pulled but like at his level of success no mm. one's uh, no one else has a uh, his pulled what he's pulled and fresh and fit um 
I don't know why they accepted that call. I mean, they had their own smoke ready for him. They had their own information. Sure. Like, remember when you said this? And yeah, they had prepared for him on some level. But um, that stream was just, I took it as entertainment. Of course, there was the, the, the accusation aspect was definitely like, yo, like, this is okay. This is too far. But I just, I was just crying like the whole time. Yeah. Like, it was, it was entertainment for me. Yeah, I think so. I think ultimately that probably was what it was. And I do mm -hmm. agree with you. I mean, I'm not a big fan of the crowd. I'm not even a big fan of like clicks on the internet where I'm like, D -d 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 -d. anytime there's a group that gets together, then there becomes an expectation of behavior. And if you yeah. cross that behavior in any way, now you're like one of them. And I'm like, oh, I just want to be one of me. And then we'll have interactions. Yeah. And so I think that's what's so difficult. But when you're part of a clique and a community, it also <laughs> feels really good. And you feel very vindicated and you feel very powerful because like now you're not alone. And so mm -hmm. I don't know. Have you been following the the recent um, the George not found controversy with Katie? Have you been following that at all or not really? This is going to sound racist, but like when I see like white people drama, I feel like I'm not going to know what's going on. <laughs> like Sir? every time I see them, like <laughs> if I click into this, I'm not going to know like. <laughs> Like when I watch academics, like I I have like yeah. years and years of like, oh, this rapper did this, this rapper did. This. So I like I have like I can like frame the whole thing for sure. But just sure, seeing sure. five minutes and know what happened when I see like white people do two drama, I'm lost. Bro. I don't know what's going you on. Know what? I think that's fair. You know what? I think that's fair. Even I was like, I don't know this Minecraft bubble, but like I'll try my best to figure out what's going on. Um, I used a lot of context clues to figure it out, but like, yeah, okay, okay, that's fine. It was just interesting because it was another Gen Z story where I was like, okay, like, inter like, it's interesting the relationship people are having with these conversations. And again, I was like, I'm all about hearing people out. I just want to know if they think that's universal, if everyone should be talking this way. What, like, okay, we wanted to talk about dating, right? Yeah. I have a question for you. Okay. How... When you're dating, how do you know that you're getting proper consent? It's like nonverbal cues. Mm -hmm. And you kind of just got to like, you got to kind of like wrap your ego up in like this like chain or like this like cage and just realize and recognize that like you're probably not going to get, you're not, you're not going to like. A person does shouldn't have to say N-O verbally for you to, like, know that it's not go time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm always looking for that nonverbal no. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I get that, I just fall back. Even, like, even like approaching a woman. Like, I can tell when she's going for it or not. Like, you know, like, hey, my name's Rashad. I thought you were cute. Nice to meet you. Blah, 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 blah. You can tell within seconds if she's feeling you or not. Mm -hmm. So I automatically make, like, exit thing. Like, I'll have, like, an exit sentence so she doesn't feel uncomfortable because i'm fine i'm the one who initiated the the interaction but what if she's not comfortable so if i'm feeling if i'm feeling like there's no like reciprocation i'll like say like oh it's no big deal it's no issue blah 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 it's all cool you know like i'll find ways to like make sure that both myself and the other person feel comfortable going into it and also exiting it because sometimes you know like you can have unwanted interactions and the person doesn't know how to understand that the, that the interaction is unwanted yeah and they don't know how to then retreat from it and exit in a way that makes both people comfortable yeah yeah i in right when i asked the question i was like oh my autists my poor autists <laughs> like figuring out nonverbal cues and shit but to be honest with you i really do think like a lot of people get have an intuition like we're moving off intuition a lot of us and we're moving off vibes mm -hmm. and we're moving off even like um like i always tell this flirting story i don't know i don't think we've ever talked about it because we've only talked once now right so i don't think i told you but there was this infamous dating story or flirting story where my i had a friend and he had an older brother okay and i was like kind of putting the moves on the older brother okay and i'm an adult i'm a legal adult okay we, but we grew up with each other our whole lives like we all grew up in the same neighborhood blah 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 and, you know, I come in and I flirt with him and so da da da, da. And uh, I'm heavily flirting. Like, it's obvious. Even his even his brother was like, bro, stop flirting with my brother. I was like, until you put a hard rule on that. And he eventually did. I was like, I ain't stopping. Because, like, I'm, you know, we're having okay. a lot of fun. So I'm talking to him. We're alone in the living room. It's going pretty good. I'm flirting. He's flirting. His next move, bro, will go down in history as one of the worst moves for me personally, but apparently has worked on other girls. He pulls a full on Trump and grabs my crotch. Just like, whoom, we haven't kissed. We haven't had an explicit conversation. We haven't done any of it. Just heavy flirting. 
grabs my crotch and like holds me. And I'm like, oh. And I looked at him. I was like, why was that the move? And he was like, I don't know. It's it's worked before. And I was like, it's not going to work right now. And I don't mean to shoot you down, but like, I don't this is not the move. And he was like, wait, really? I was like, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. So we sat down and we talked about it. And again, I've known this guy my whole life. Like I know for some people they might be like, oh, but like you need to relax, girl. Like I was literally like mm. thinking about this man naked. Everybody relax. Okay. But the move gave me the biggest ick I have ever felt in my life. And I was like, oh, why did you do that? He genuinely says not only would it work on other people, but he figured since we are really heavily flirting, that would just be like a clear where he's at, like a clear indication. I'm not even going to fault him for making the move because obviously he respected my consent right away. He completely backed off. His brother was like, okay, you two, you're done. Both of you are done. And then we never engaged <laughs> again. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was like a family friend to this day. I still like, like this man a lot. I see him frequently or enough, you know, when I'm in the States, it's fine. It's all good. But that was his move. And I want to know mm -hmm. how many people are having those situations and they're not sure how to de-escalate or have the conversation. And then how many people are having like actual essay situations and how many people can tell the difference between the two? Because to me, that was obviously not essay. That was just like failed yeah. flirting. Yeah, that sounds like some shit you would do like. Like that would require like you already having had like actual like sexual interactions with the person beforehand. I think. Yeah, so it's like, I don't, that's, at best, maybe, if you're both, like, drunk, and there's, like, a clear, like, atmosphere and vibe of, like, yo, this is what's gonna happen, but even then, you're still pushing it. I've always kept things, like, I don't know, this is gonna sound match, like, like, old school or chivalrous or some dumb shit, but, like, you know, like, you know, like, hand in the hair, maybe hand on the cheek, or something like that, yeah, or, like, yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying, like, or, like, yeah, you know, just... Something just start small, start simple to communicate like, hey, like there is a there's phys I want to communicate physical affection. Yeah. And I'm giving you the room to like you're, you're kind of like you're taking the lead as a man, but you're kind of like. She like you're taking the lead, but you you can't really know where you're going without like her giving you that that cue of like, OK, you can go that you can go this way, that way. Mm. So. I don't know. It's like it, it's it's definitely uh, I don't know for because like as a as a man, I've never had to. OK, that's not true. I got. Oh, man. I don't know if I want to tell this story yet because I was, I was saving this for a story time. Um, I was groped last weekend and I didn't think anything of it because I'm like, you know, I'm, like, okay. I'm a guy like she's like smaller than me. If I wanted to pick her up and throw her like a football, I could. Sure. Um, but even still with that experience that's only that was the first time it ever happened and that was like Ooh. last weekend so how many women out there have dealt with something like that way more often way more frequent i don't think i could give like a clarified were you grown by like a man or a woman answer i was a woman no if it okay. was if it was a dude it would have yeah it would have been it would have been, been a bad situation okay but Would you have fought the man or at least indicate oh, it's some go, level. Yeah, it's go, it's go time. Okay, but, but yeah, why that with a man and not that with a woman? It's like, it's like when, okay, it's not the exact same thing. But it's like, number one, I'm just, I'm not gay. So okay. like nothing wrong with being gay, sure. but I'm not gay. And to me, it's also kind of like a, um, from man to man, like unwanted physical interaction, be it sexual or not, oftentimes comes across as like, oh, you think I'm a bitch. Like you think you think you could just like play with me. So like now I got to like remind you that's not the case. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? With, whereas with a woman, it's like this person's like she was also drunk. So it's like mm, this person's okay. drunk. OK. It, you know, and it's like plus you look crazy swing on a woman anyway. Like it's just it, it does. it's just it there's so crazy. many different reasons. Yeah. Like there's so many different reasons why I just <clears throat> would not treat it the exact same way. But I know in like today's day and age that's considered like um homophobic or like that's considered like um maybe sexist like not or something to punch like that but it, well like to be angry at a man groping oh, you but not I a see. woman some people might find that like oh like well you're, you're a homophobe no i think it's no. a gendered issue more than a orientation issue right it's more of a like now we're equals and then it's like if a if it like a i don't know like a weaker person came and groped me i'd be like what are you doing 
Yeah. Like, you remember when George Bush Sr. was groping people? I'm like, he's in a wheelchair. Slap his old person hand. He's like 90 years old. And everyone's like, he's <laughs> I did the- not know about Bro, I would have slapped his hand and be like, what are you doing? You are an old man. Right. You are my grandpa's. What are you doing? But then people don't do that. Now, look, I'm very aggressive. And I'm very aggressive for a lot of reasons, okay? When I was born this way. So I'm luckier than half the bitches in the world, okay? But okay. literally, I understand. No, I think that dynamic makes a lot of sense because it feels more like an equal playing field. And then if you hit a woman... It's kind of like you could have done a lot more before you hit her. Yeah, and it's also like ironically the same people that would like criticize you for being mad at a man doing it not a woman would also yeah. freak out on you for like freaking out on the woman. So it's like I'm yeah, like yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. clearly society is insane. I'm not participating in the <laughs> insanity, and it's also just the aspect of like someone who is a physical threat to me that I'm not attracted to is making a sexual advance that is now touching against my consent. Yeah. Whereas someone who I'm kind of attracted to sure. and is drunk and is a woman and is like tiny in comparison yeah. to me. So it's like, yeah, but um, I haven't been in enough situations where my comfort has been violated by someone of the opposite sex for me to like give like a a nuanced enough like t- I can I can give you like I know for a fact like as a man like I try to read as many nonverbal cues as possible because that's how most people do it. it's like nonverbal mm-hmm. cues mm-hmm. I know like like it was like they had that like progressive victory thing and like they were talking about like you know guys approaching women too much and stuff yeah, like yeah. that and, yeah I mean like I don't know with some people like I- I'm aware of the fact that in some circles people have to be psych that has to be verbal you know yeah I think that. So, yeah, I don't. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Finish your thought. No, I mean, that was, that was pretty much it. Yeah. I think people, I think, okay, so like, obviously, I was raised in like a conservative neighborhood and around conservative people. And my parents always taught me two things that I'm realizing I'm not hearing for a lot of people stranger danger. Okay. Mm-hmm. And if you are alone with a man, sex might happen. Mm-hmm. Okay. Whether consensually or non consensually. So I was kind of taught like, Anytime you're alone with a man, just know that he might be thinking about sex. And I was like, no, that's not true. That's not how it works. And then I was hanging out with guys one on one. I was like, oh, damn. Okay. We all just horny every day, right? That's like what's happening. Mm-hmm. Now, not all men, of course. Like I've met a lot of guys. That's not, that's not how it went down. But if I'm talking about a normal heterosexual bubble, there seems to be a pattern of behavior in which when I am alone with a guy, there's always that like, we going to do this? And I'm like, oh, now when I realized that, I did reform how I socialized with men, meaning that if I in any way was into him, I would let, let that be known. And then I would say, it's not that I'm opposed to being intimate, but if we're going to be intimate, here are my requirements, like STI testing and condoms and all these other things. Because first of all, I'm super sex positive. So you're not going to shame me for like asking people for sex. But mm-hmm. because I know that, I also surprise a lot of men and they're like, oh, Like, you're just asking ahead of time. I was like, well, I just want to end up at your place. And then we're flirting. And then it's slow. And then all of a sudden, I didn't prepare. And I didn't get tested. And I didn't get the right birth control. And like, well, now we can't have sex, you know, because I didn't prepare. So I would rather just come out with it. And like, a lot of men are relieved when I do that, for sure. Because they're like, okay, good. Now I don't have to guess if she's into me. She's just, and now there's no games. The dilemma with that method is, one, I don't mind going straight to the good stuff. I don't need the buildup. Two, I think the buildup starts the moment like there's any kind of flirting anyways. Mm-hmm. And three, it's for my safety. Because I learned right. a lot of lessons the hard way growing up about like not doing that. Mm-hmm. And when I wasn't doing that, I got into a lot more trouble. A lot of miscommunication. A lot of people like very confused about signals and throwing signs up and People assuming. So I think I do it for the safety of myself and my community. I think as a good community member, I want to be explicit and it has to start with me. Mm-hmm. And that includes the rejection. The moment, yeah. like I remember this guy hit me up. He hit me up out of nowhere. We had had a date together at one point. He hit me up out of nowhere. And he's like, hey, I really miss you. And I was like, I was like, I'm dating someone. I'm busy. And he was like, I, who says I hit you up to say I miss, like I you know, like that, it wasn't even sexual. And I was like, I miss you out of the blue, bro. Don't fuck with me. And he was like, okay, but like, also you could have just like given me a moment. I was like, nah, I know what an I miss you text is. I'm not that autistic. Like I know what it is. And again, it's like, uh, I know that. It depends though. <laughs> Cause sometimes a person could really, really like, just like Brittany that bad. And like actually, 
You doubt no, that? This man hadn't hit me up in so long, please. Okay, yeah. I mean, like, if it's it's been if it's been like if it's been like more than like three months or something, like if it's been like up to six oh, to twelve, he, yeah, like, longer, yeah, you're bullshitting. longer, like almost a year. Oh yeah, yeah. Never mind. Like, yeah, come on, bro, come on, out of the blue, yeah, nah. bro. Yeah, girl, nah. I miss you. Yeah. Girl, sit down, girl. Anyways, it's fine, but yeah. like, it's fine. But like, obviously, I just went instead of doing the whole like, oh, I miss you too. What's up? Mm -hmm. Or, oh, my God, I just went straight to, I'm seeing someone right now, so I can't. And he was like, and again, that that bluntness is, I think, a mm -hmm. part of my personality that goes, let's just skip the middle and go straight to, like, That's I already know weird. what this is. But it isn't what That's people weird. want. Rashad, people want the buildup. They want the slow texts. They want the, I think he's into mm -hmm. me, girls. He's asking me over. They want the game. And that's fine. I'm not even shitting on it. But I'm saying when those people hang out together, sometimes there's a miscommunication and then all of a sudden we have people mm -hmm. making accusations. And then yeah. there's actual harm being done at a rampant degree everyone is ignoring because everyone's focused on these like false accusations. Mm -hmm. So obviously, hello, if everyone's paying attention to Ethan, we're ignoring all of that space, time, and resource from people who are actual victims. Tell me that's not frustrating. Something tells me people don't really put any stock in Ethan's accusations. Like, I feel That's like that whole, is. like, thing, honestly, I think, because it, it would have been a much bigger storm than it. Like, honestly, I don't think anyone's really paying it any mind as much as my, as much mind as Ethan might have hoped people would have. I think oh, it's like man. a, I think it's like a, uh, I think it's like a, it's like a little thorn in Myron's side of like, remember when I, when I put this on you? But I think most people can kind of tell, like, this is just Ethan and, and Fresh and Fit playing mind games. Like, I mean, that's at least how I felt. Like, sometimes you can, like, watch a video and ch and you can feel, like, the the temperature around it. Like, mm. you can kind of, like, tell how the interwebs is feeling about this particular thing. Mm -mm. I didn't really get that from that video. I kind of got the energy of, oh, Fresh and Fit and the H3 camp are beefing. Let's watch this more so than, yo, Myron did you know because that was like a while ago that accusation that it was like two years ago or a year and a half ago yeah yeah, like, yeah. long time ago already yeah you know? and and it didn't really do any damage to that's fresh i mean point. myron's done worse wait that's a great point i never thought about it that way but i think you're right that these accusations haven't really stuck why is mm -hmm. ethan doing that what a weird thing to decide to do but i do think it confuses part of the audience mostly the chronically online girlies and i want to support them the most obviously my audience is mostly women and i want to give them mm -hmm. tools to be preventative what tools are men getting i know we wanted to talk about like dating and gurus and all these role models what tools are boys mm -hmm. using to know how to date and treat girls right like what are some of the tools that gen z is utilizing are boys being mean uh, to girls? You, your face tells me like they don't have any or what's up? <laughs> yeah, there's none in the, there's, there's none. Um, <laughs> okay, what there's a lot need? of people teaching, there's, there's a lot of people teaching us how to be attractive to women, but it's like, someone put it really well. I think academics put it really well. He said, uh, the red pill teaches you how to get in the door, but it doesn't teach you how to actually be a boyfriend or to be a mm. husband. Like, it's like, okay, make money, be fit make friends have a good social media page get status but it's like okay like let's say you get all of those things how do you maintain a relationship yeah. how do you um interact because like honestly like ironically enough in spite of all the allegations made against tate one thing i find really interesting about tate in contrast to people like myron and sneeko is tate acts like a guy who would never do the shit he's accused of when he's talking to women mm -hmm. like in spite of being the most like in spite of him being famous for t saying crazy shit about women if you watch him on these panels he's funny he's nice he's very like when he's trying to convince women of what he thinks he's not overbearing or like you're an idiot or you're like he's very very smooth with it in contrast to someone like myron or Sneeko, where it's like insult after insult after insult after insult tate is oddly enough really like he's i hate the fucking word riz um it's he has that i don't and it's not even gift of gab he's he's just very he gets it like he gets it hmm. and i feel like um that's a part of the red pill that's not verbalized enough now i picked it up I, i'm watching it and i'm like this motherfucker is really good at this shit like he's like in spite of everyone saying he hates women so much which i mean i'm not going to contest the crazy shit he said he's very very good at interacting with them in a way that makes them feel like calm relaxed blah 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 
And I picked up on it and I tried to learn from that. Like, okay, like, what am I doing? Like, how, when I interact with women, am I am I like that? Or am I like like Myron or Sneeko? And granted, Myron's the, the, the moderator, so he has to be an asshole. Sure. But, like, when I look at how, like, Sneeko is or, like, the, the, the producer Chris, like, mm-hmm. they're much more aggressive. They're much more abrasive. And they're a lot less successful at convincing the women of what they think whereas a guy like tate walks in all these accusations all these charges and he's extremely convincing so mm-hmm. long story short no there is no like like 10 commandments for men of like how to interact with women successfully and be nice and kind and be sure. a boyfriend but there is kind of like a if you're smart enough to see it you could definitely read through watching tate um he's very good at that could you tell me the difference between sort of like the Tate kind of character or like the Myron kind of person or even academics compared to maybe like the suburban dad. Like are there Gen Z boys mm-hmm. who want to be the suburban dad? I meet them myself, but I'm not sure if you are talking to people who are like, yeah, dude, I just want like a wife and kids and a picket fence and a dog. That's most guy most guys that I know. I'm the only one that's lost their mind. Um <laughs> I'd say most guys for sure want something normal. Yeah. But like a lot of guys are finding that they can't even get a woman to say yes to a date. So they're kind of like, okay, boyfriend, husband shit. I'll get to that later. How do I be attractive enough to even get laid, right? Because it's like there are situations where you can be boyfriend material and she'll say, mm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm bringing God into my life right now. I'm not really interested in sex, but she's, she's definitely having sex with someone else. But it's because you're boyfriend and husband material but you and you don't have like any sex appeal you have no like game you have no you don't have any of that other shit so you're kind of like sitting in this box like when she's done like you know living living the life she'll Mm -hmm. come pick you up out of it and that's like almost every dude's nightmare so they're kind of like trying to figure out okay how do i be attractive first so she actually likes me then i can be this husband boyfriend thing the problem is the red pill doesn't even teach that Mm. so like you're, you're you're not aware of like how to actually be, you know, and I, I even I don't even fully know yet. Like I'm still learning. Like I don't even fucking fully know. Like I'm 23. So, um, but yeah, there is no like Bible. And as you asked them, um, the difference between guys like Tate and the rest. I mean, like I think that Tate is a lot less. I think he's a lot less angry, maybe, or like a lot. I think he's a lot more. The vibe I get from him, he's a lot less angry at women. He does, he he's a lot more, he does not seem bitter at all no. he seems very content with both what he's doing and himself um he seems really just he he seems unbothered generally mm-hmm. speaking like if you see the way he reacts to like insults on stream he won't even give a reaction like he'll he seems really content with himself and um when i contrast that to a guy like Sneeko, who's mm-hmm. also entertaining also successful but when he's on those streams he's a lot more abrasive a lot more confrontational with the women, whereas Tate seems to be able to accomplish what guys like Myron and Sneeko are trying to do with, you know, the arguing and the insults. He seems to be really, really capable of doing it without lobbing those. And I guess, like, the closest is going to be a wild shot. Zerka. <laughs> Zerka is probably as close to... And he's wild, but it's that humor. It's that understanding of, like, not being too factoidish and, like, too logical. Because when you're talking to women, they're very social. So, like, they don't want to hear all these, like, little factoids. Just talk to them normal. You know what I mean? Like, most people. So, it's like, I don't know. Tate does seem, in spite of the, all the allegations in the chat, he does seem to be a lot more acclimated to interacting with women. Which I don't know if young men are taking that away from Tate. I don't know if they're absorbing that because yeah. he's not explaining that part. He's kind of just sitting there saying, "Get rich, get ripped, get bitches, get money, get fame." The end. Yeah, you know that's interesting. Myron said something that stood out to me in the conversation with H three, um, and I wonder what you thought about it. He said, "Like men are the gatekeepers of marriage, and women are the gatekeepers of sex." And I grew up in a different bubble. In the bubble I grew up in, men are the gatekeepers of sex and women are the gatekeepers of marriage. Like women are the marriage choosers. Men have to be good enough mates for women to marry them. And like, so that was like a really interesting bubble difference to me. I was like, oh, that's unique. What do you think about that? I'm going to say something crazy. I think women are the gatekeepers of both. Damn. <laughs> like, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> I, I mean, if you're Drake, like, obviously, like, this is not a factor for you. But if you're yeah. like a normal guy, like, 
Um, if you're a normal guy who's not like some super successful like celebrity or some shit or some like alpha Chad, yeah, yeah, you know, to get a relationship or sex, that is not in your hands. You are starting from literally level one, and you're trying to get like level two, and that's hard. Level three is even harder. Level four, like you have no option here. You show up, you make a hey, I thought you were cute. Uh, I'm opening myself up to you now. Like you have no say. So. I think it's like a, a fantasy of like, yeah, men are the ones that guard relationships. So which men? <laughs> like, which guys are we talking about? So for me, like, in my experience, when I was like, like 20, 21, I was a lot more out of shape. I wasn't really, I didn't really have my shit together. And I noticed that it was so much harder to, to like, get either of these things. Mm. So like, if you're the average guy, like marriage and sex are not in your hands, like at all. Like you're, you're very much like trying to get both. You know, I've been really thinking about like, what is this mythical average man? And I started to think <laughs> about the conversation we had initially, that first one. And I started to think about my little subculture where everybody in my little like sex positive BDSM bubble was like a lot of them weren't like the greatest looking people in terms of aesthetic, but were very, very sweet okay. and loving. And they got fucking laid, bro. And we had a great time. And as I was sitting there observing like, oh, yeah, like none of these people are conventional. And when anyone slightly conventional came into the dungeon, girl, you better bet everybody hit on them because they were like tens of the dungeon, maybe like seven in real life. You know what I mean? Okay. And there's something about that where I'm like, oh, like I when I think average, I hate to say this out loud. So forgive me, everybody listening. When I think average person, I just think of like a four or five who has an average job, average looks, average everything, literally. And I'm like, yeah, all those people are everywhere and they're getting laid. But I'm not thinking of my BDSM people as not average. But I realize, like, are they not average to people? Are they considered not average because of their lifestyle? I think. Mm, so, like, <clears throat> to address your, um, like, that BDSM dungeon thing, like, that sounds so, like, rare. Like, that sounds like such a very small, like, thing to be a part of that, like, I think most people, yeah, I guess, like, the average person walking in, but then again, yo, the bar has to be in hell for the average person to walk in and be a 10. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. Mm. Maybe the bar was, I don't know. I don't want to judge your group. I don't want to start making yeah. judgments, but it's also an age thing. Like, when you're an average guy, you're probably going to get married when you're like 27, 28, 29. But those first few years when you're 18, 19, sure. 20, 21, 23, oh, yeah, it's like hell on earth. You're not getting laid. You don't have a girl. Like, you're kind of like, you're kind of invisible because women don't have the shackles of like patriarchy on them anymore. Like, they don't have to be forced to marry some bum because he's got a paycheck, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now it's like that guy's 6'3", he's handsome, he's got, you know, he's, he's nice physique, whatever, he's popular. That's what I'm going for. Whereas the guy that's probably going to be the husband, you know, he's probably not as tall, not as handsome, not as good looking, blah, blah, blah. When people are young, they're a lot more likely to give into like vice and like, sure. you know, like desires and shit like that. So, yeah, like I feel like it's also an age thing where, you know, a lot of young people are attracted, young men are attracted to the red pill because you're in the most like, you're in the most like Darwinist like space spot of like your life where it's like if you if you don't make the cut you're not getting anything like you're like it's over for you for like a good few years mm -hmm. then when you hit those like late 20s early 30s people want to settle down and you probably are going to start to get married and shit but i think you know like the average guy probably like not too not not really tall not pretty not really handsome not really fit and in shape no real strong like popularity or presence on social media like I mean, I believe average guys when they say they're struggling. I've struggled in dating. Like, it, it does seem to be, like, a, a phenomenon right now. But I think it's probably a young people thing. Mm. It's interesting. If I just observe my brothers, because they're so different. They all look very different. They all have different, different tropes. They all belong to very different tropes. And I look okay. at which brothers were, like, the most successful right out the gate. Obviously, the tallest ones. I think that's mm -hmm. pretty, like. And the ones who didn't yeah. go bald as fast. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and... That alone got them much further than the other brothers that were like maybe a little bit shorter, maybe like, you know, balding quicker, which is interesting. And I think about those very mm -hmm. superficial things. But then if I really looked into who's having a successful relationship, only one, well, one of two of my brothers are married. And I would say one of them has a successful relationship. I said what I said. And when I look at that relationship, okay, 
okay. when I look at that relationship and I really love his relationship and his relationship is the one I modeled my courting style after to me, my husband. Mm -hmm. um, it's very serious. And he was the picker and the holder of the sex and of the marriage and his, as it was his wife to be fair, but he, in his dating history was always like interviewing women and being like, no, next no next mm -hmm. but to be fair he's literally like over six feet he makes like 150k a year he's okay, really good looking he's got a six pack yeah. like you know what I'm saying? and sense. he's been out of high school had like 20k in the bank saved because he worked jobs like he just hustled all through high school this kid knew at like 10 years old he's like i'm gonna be a father and i'm gonna be the best father and i'm gonna be better than all of you and then he just did it and now they're about to have five kids bro five so like killed it right He's the yeah. exception to me. He's not the average. Nobody works as hard as that brother. Like he works harder. He works now 12 hour days on average. Sundays mm -hmm. off, of course, for the Lord. So like this man's okay. consistent, bro. But he is an exception even amongst our family. Every sibling, if you ask them who's your favorite, him. Okay, wow. Okay. He's everyone's favorite. Everybody loves him because he's a good person, though. Ultimately, the reason they love my brother, I call him my farm brother, is because he's a very good person. He's honest. He's fair. He doesn't give a fuck if you're different from him. He will judge you fairly. I go to him for advice on my bullshit lifestyle that he thinks is so gross, but he will be very fair about it. My mm -hmm. like liberal lifestyle, he's like, but he's so fair. So when I see these men who are struggling in dating, I want to ask them if one, they're ready to be married and two, if they're even good people. I don't think that's a... That's not even a part of the conversation when we start talking about red pulling young men. Like, okay, are you ready fair. to be? Are you ready to be a good husband? Like, no one's even thinking of that. Like, I, like, I don't know. Maybe it's a person by because like it's rare to find a young guy that that's young and's like I'm gonna be married and I'm gonna For be sure. a dad and I'm gonna, you know. And there's also like the existential crisis that hits you when you're like in your early twenties and shit's not really making sense. Like when you're like twenty something. And dating isn't necessarily working the way you thought it was going to work when you were growing up. So then you have this, like, wave of, like, panic that hits you where you're like, yo, fuck all that husband shit. Fuck all that marriage shit. I'm going to be a hoe. Like, I'm yeah. going to go out there and I'm going to live life because, frankly, I'm, I've am i been missing out. Like, I think young men, average young men are kind of, like, seeing, especially in this era of social media, like, the, the, the FOMO era where yeah. you, you feel like you're missing out on all this shit. It's a perfect concoction of like freak out where it's like, okay, I don't have this money. I don't have these chicks. I don't have this. I don't have that. And I'm 20 something years old and I'm lonely. Nothing's going my way. And I think that, um, you know, when you're having that panic, you kind of bite into whatever you, whatever's closest to you that's giving you the advice you think you need. Yeah. So I think that like, as it pertains to like the left, like liberal blue pill kind of advice for men, it's kind of like they'll say like, just be nice and be kind. Kind of like your brother, like he's a nice, kind guy. He's he's motivated to be a father, is interested in being a father. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They kind of give men that and they don't realize most of these guys aren't assholes. And a lot of them probably do want to be fathers. The problem is being nice isn't really like, really cutting it. So it's like, okay, like what do I do besides be nice? Cause I've been nice to women before. Every guy has been nice to a woman. Like, when you like someone, you're probably gonna be, unless you're like a lunatic, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, okay, I've been nice. I probably, you know, had the daydreams about, like, some, like, picket fence and two-story home and kids. I've had all of that, and it's still not working. <laughs> like, what the fuck am I doing? And then the red pill comes along and it's like, you're fat, you're ugly, mm. you dress horribly, your wardrobe is fucked up, you smell, you have no money, you have, like, 20 followers on the gram, you, you, you suck in every way. Like, if you even want a chance at being a option get all this shit figured out first and like you, like you add in the fact that these guys are so young they completely forget about the husband father boyfriend <laughs> shit and i'm young too i'm 23 so i'm really yeah. speaking from experience here mm -hmm. well i'm i'm slipping over to chat slightly and i will see like a the men in the audience seem to agree with your assessment about that lived experience and so i'm mm -hmm. you know i'm curious about that like overlap where i'm like okay so there are people that feel like you are speaking facts you are representing mm -hmm. you are like oh my gosh this is so relatable i guess like in my mind separate from the world's expectations i want to know the single motivators like in these people's lives like when they think about their biggest priority like what is the number one priority of like a young man honestly like outside of what the world keeps telling him it should be like what do you think internally they are prioritizing for the average guy, 
I think the average guy wants a wife and a family and kids and just like a normal legacy. Like, I yeah. think that's the, the average guy wants. Like, come on, like, you know what I mean? Like, I think uh, Alba and Sneeko were having this funny conversation where like Sneeko was like, I want like 20 hoes and 20 bitches. And I think a lot of these young dudes don't realize like, you're not Andrew Tate. Yeah. He's 30 something years old and is still committed to this whole 20 bitches mentality. Mm -hmm. Y'all aren't even 25. Stop thinking that you're him. You're not him. To be 35 and still want to live like that, you have to be a very unique and like just different like kind of person. Yeah. But if you're like in your like early to mid 20s or like really like you're like 18, 19, you don't want 10 hoes. Because when you meet that one chick that really like you fall like heads, like, you're not going to want anybody else with her. You're going to be like head over heels. So I think the average guy just wants something normal. Me, on the other hand, like I've th I've completely lost my mind, but. For the normal humans out there, I'd yeah. say, like, most young guys want something normal. So, um, did you see on the podcast, like, Myron and uh, Walter's girlfriends? Or, like, what any of them look like? Or the kinds of women? Do like, you know? IG models? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those girls? Okay, do you yeah. think those girls are attractive? Are you into that category of girl? I'm gonna keep it a thousand with you. They're attractive, but, like, I would never, like like be like in a committed relationship with an ig model no okay why not no it's too much I, I feel like people like them have like i feel like they can't be satisfied and maybe i'm just judging i think maybe it's projection because like in a way like i'm pursuing a lot of shit too so like i can't be with someone who also wants the world because then because like what if i draw my limit further than, like a, sooner than you do what if i'm like okay whoof like i'm making a hundred thousand a year we're going on vacation this is it but you want birkin bags and shit you gotta go you know what i mean <laughs> like you gotta go like i'm not dropping 20 racks on a birkin um i just like i want someone who's simple probably nerdy like like you know like i i don't want some like instagram bad bitch because like i just don't see a long term like i just don't see it happening especially if they're like overly invested in their looks like a lot and constantly sure. need to post shit a lot that kind of tells me that you probably want to enjoy this for as long as you can probably like be on boats yachts like which is fine like i'm i'm not judging it i just know like i can't be fulfilled by that well i mean i would so in my bubble we'd call that materialistic women and yeah we would say don't date materialistic men or women because mm. I grew up in a religious bubble. And like, how many times has Jesus got to talk about rich people getting into heaven for people to realize, like, if you focus your dedication yeah. on materialism, like, where's the humility in that? So mm. I I agree with that. Like, obviously, even though I'm on Instagram and even though I'm on OF, I don't consider myself that category of woman. It's like totally different. Like, I look at them and I'm like, oh, what an interesting life you have. I, I thought mm. about going in that direction at one point in my life. I was like, should I be an anime big titty girl? Should I get plastic surgery and like do that for my living? Because I thought about it. I was like, I could do this for a living. Okay. But I decided on this instead, right? Because I was like, what could I keep up with every day? Girl, being cute every day is hard. Mm. I'm not mm. doing that. But it is hard, I think, because it is about trends and materialism. And it's just like, it's too much for me. But it is a lifestyle. Yeah. It is a lifestyle that's different. So I look at them and I'm like, I don't like. So I personally am not attracted to anyone who shows up on Fresh and Fit. I think they're all very, like, I'm sure nice-ish, but, like, I'm just not only am I not physically attracted to any of them, like, their energy makes me, like, never want to date again. All of them. Men, women. I'm just like, oh, why? Mm. Even when I saw Abba go on Fresh and Fit, I'm like, why are you there? Why are you there? Mm. <laughs> like, don't go there. Okay. And so I was kind of happy when he burned the bridge. I was like, okay, good. My taste <laughs> in people is like, it's okay. We're good. <laughs> like, you know, because, like, I just... Mm, because there's like a wholesomeness, you know, that I look for in people. And so I don't see mm -hmm. that on the fresh and fit bubble. I don't see a wholesomeness. I don't see gratitude. Yeah. I don't see someone growing old with somebody and having grandkids who are going to look up to you and think highly of you. I don't see people mm -hmm. who are going to make like food for their kids or clean up your child's vomit or understand your child is going to blow a diaper at a McDonald's and you're going to have to clean <laughs> that. Like I don't see those women mm -hmm. being what I would call like mother material. So obviously ah, that's exactly that. See, that's exactly that's one of the things that I also feel when I'm watching a lot of IG models. I'm like, I can't imagine this person holding my child correctly. Like I kind of see them like holding them upside down or like or like holding them like you know, I, I don't really like I can't see them like feeding my kid when they're throwing a tantrum. Like I just can't like it's just it's just not I just can't see it. Yes. You know, it's like one of the things I, a lot of young men have to keep in mind when they're watching 
fresh and fit is these chicks are not normal they're miami thoughts and when you're talking to miami thoughts every day you're gonna hear some wild shit i agree yes they want birkins yes they want amgs yes they want all this stuff but the average chick is not like that right. so it's like young men are having their perception far too skewed by chicks that they probably won't even want to marry and it's like you got to be able to like it's funny that you talk about this all the time you got to be able to see bubbles you have to be able to know when you're looking at a space you don't want to be a part of you're not built for Mm. like if i could tell most red pill young guys viewing that shit like look you're not built for half of this shit i'm not i i can even admit i'm not built for the the ig models Mm -hmm. i'm not built for this shit i i'm scared frankly i'm scared of these chicks like i'm not built for that lifestyle and i think um you're so right about that it's a very good point you made yeah, well, I think people mistake, and I, look, I, I, you know, I always joke, like, I've, I've always had a trope of a guy I liked, and I've always dated that guy, and same with girls, I have a specific trope of girls that I'm into, and I've always dated that trope, and I've always found, like, I always joke, like, the toxic versions of them, I was like, where's the healthy version of my trope? Oh, and then I, I married him, so I'm, like, really excited about it, because everyone would tell me, like, oh, it's the kind of guy you're dating, I was like, no, it's not the mm. kind of guy. It's the toxic version, but it's the right trope. I want a, I want a gamer who watches anime and is chill and likes philosophy. And I know that because like that hobby is my mm. – I don't want to be a part of that hobby. I like my hobby and I like my life that is like all in okay. – like I have three monitors. I need somebody who wants three monitors in their life, yeah. you know? And that's a gamer. So I was like, who is the gamer I'm going to end up with? It's not the engineer. Yeah. I'm not very into engineer types. Also could have mm. three monitors. My dad has six. Yeah. Not a gamer, but an engineer. Not my bubble. And I'm like, okay, which bubble am I going to date? I always got the bubble correctly, but never the right version because there's all these different types. So uh-huh. I realized like, okay, what category makes my person? And they have these certain traits. Same with girls. I love fake nails on a girl, but I could never date a girl who always had fake nails, who always had to have her makeup on. Even when I was dating women, I was like, how often do you wear makeup? She's like, every day, don't leave the house without it. Not dating her. Because I don't date women who need to have makeup on to leave the house. Okay. Because I don't have time to wait for you to get ready. I will roll out of bed, brush my teeth, and leave the house. Girl, I don't care if I have makeup on. So I need somebody in my life who has the same lifestyle as me. Yeah. I'm looking for lifestyle. I want us to have the same lifestyle. That's interesting. So you said... um. So like you have like this archetype that you're like that you're like into. Okay. So like how long so you only found one person that that was like a healthy version of what you were looking for? Like why do you think that was so hard to find? Okay, two reasons. One, uh during the most active dating period of my life, I was toxic. Okay. So like what healthy person was going to date me, girl? Okay. So, let's be introspective here. I was absolutely toxic enough to only attract that level of healthy or toxic and it was toxic so that was on me and then two um i just didn't know myself enough or my values until i turned about 30 when i turned 30 Mm. i like put my foot down and i was like okay absolutely no second chances and absolutely these are my values and they're not gonna get crossed these are my like code of honor this these are my this is my principle i'm living by this principle okay i'm gonna have principles And I'm going to form them as a, as a non-religious person. And then I'm going to stick to them okay. no matter the temptation because I do think they are objectively the right thing for me, for Brittany. Okay. And then I took three years off of dating. And then third year into that hiatus, I guess, I ran into my now husband. And we started mm-hmm. dating and courting. And when I went into it, I was very serious about it. Yeah. So he was already the right trope. We are in the right circles. He already had the right hobbies. The conversation was fire. Like it was so good. Right away I was like, I don't know who this is, but he might be my next best friend. And he turned out to be my I like my perfect best friend. And I was like, great. But um I had been healthy enough. And at the time I had dated enough, like first dates, even during the healthy period of my life, to like write people off right away. No second dates. Unless I was like really, really sure. And it was down to values. Uh what was your question? It was like it was like you're you're on point. It it was like you're finding finding that finding the healthy version of Mm. your archetype. And the archetype, I'm not fucking with you. Every boy that I've basically been super into, and I focused on boys a lot because as much as I was dating girls during COVID, bro, the dating pool for an older girl millennial who is going to date a queer girl who has who has to understand like she's not going to have contact with my family 
It's very hard to find. Okay. Okay. So boys were easier, but I was dating both. And then the mm-hmm. first boy who came into my life, like during COVID, he was the first one who fit all of the right tropes and on resume was exactly had the same lifestyle as me, the same goals as me, the same values, the big things, mm-hmm. the big things that mattered. And we both felt the same about each other. It was mutual. It was symbio. It was symbiosis. Like we had symbiosis. We were symbiotic. So okay. it wasn't like I liked him more than he liked me or he liked me more than it was like, hey, you. I know we've only talked like once or twice, but you feel that? And I was like, bro, I hear that. I think it. Like we're having a moment. And then we went further into that relationship. But prior mm. to that, there were people in my DMs. I was flirting with people, but I knew they weren't the one. I was like, you have the right things. You're nerdy. You like anime. You play D&D. It almost sounds right, mm-hmm. but something's off. And then he showed up. I was like, you like anime. You're nerdy. You play D&D. And I was like, but we're the same in terms of values, the same lifestyle, the same outlook, the same hope for our life. That's what it was. Okay. Like that's it's about finding the right trope and then finding the right life. Like, look, I live in Croatia. I moved away from my mom and dad. I moved away from my siblings. Like that alone would have alienated me from so many other men who are like family men. Oh, I want to live next to my mom and dad. I want to die next to my parents. I love my parents, but I don't want to die next to them. Okay. We we do bet we would fight. My mom even says it. She goes, that is it. Distance makes the heart go fonder. I love you. And I'm like, I know. We do better a little further for part. Okay. Okay. But we talk every day on the phone. But like, you know what I'm saying? But if I married a yeah. man who was like, I want to live next to my mom and dad, I'd be like, oh. That means your life is dictated by your parents. Him and our life is dictated by us. Even his parents, um, they're very independent themselves. And they always like, they'll come and visit us. And that's really nice. Mm-hmm. But they'll look at us and they're like, okay, one, you guys are very in love. And I was like, thank you. And then two, they're like, it's nice. You guys are like, you're really just like happy and you're doing your own thing, right? I was like, we're super happy. We're doing everything we want to do. We're good. I know everyone else is like, okay, like you guys are kind of isolated. I was like, we're chilling. But we'll see. We see people. It's just like we're very hermetic in the same way. Does that Let make me sense? challenge you on something. Tell me, tell me. It tell does me. make sense. So you said something interesting. You said if someone wants to die next to their parents, you feel like they're being a little bit too influenced by their parents. I feel like that's kind of most people, maybe throughout history, probably would want to die maybe close to where their family, at least their family. Like yeah, if, yeah, not, yeah. if not their parents, do you think that maybe like your, your, your past with your parents might be the reason why you're not so like hyped up or like you feel the need to stay in that spot? Well, for sure. Look, the dream would be to own a cul-de-sac with all my siblings and my parents. Okay. Even even in COVID, my brother and I, like, we should buy these houses next door to each other. That'd be so funny. And then we were all joking <clears throat> about it. But as a family, one, we're all very opinionated. We're all very independent. And we as a family have discussed this. My mom called me the other day. She goes, do you want to move next to your brother with me? And I was like, no, you already know what will happen. And she goes, no, you're right. You're right. You should stay far away, but you should come visit more. And I was like, obviously. And even my brother, he's like, you can live next to me, dude, but we're going to have fights over how you raise your kids. I was like, obviously, because like we love each other, but I'm going to mm-hmm. raise my kids like gender neutral. I'm not going to have kids. But if I raise my kids, they'd be like pro LGBT and gender neutral. And then their kids would come over and then they'd all have to talk. And then it would cause conversation. My brother moved to a Catholic neighborhood with Catholic people. Okay. My other brother, who's super Catholic, only has Catholic friends. He has no secular friends. Okay. My parents, their friends are their cousins who are, say with me, Catholic. Okay. So they love their life so much. If I move next door to them, it's kind of like holding up like two men kissing on my front door and being like, hi, mom and dad. <laughs> it's kind of fucked okay. up. <laughs> No, it's 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 like the it's the circumstances. You're aware of the circumstances yeah. and you've responded to them in an adult way. I want to give people like respect and boundaries, and I want to say I really love my life. Like my brother is so okay. Do you know those Marilyn Monroe pinup photos? Like people have in their houses. Yeah. Like she'll be tatted up or she'll be playing pool. My sister used to have those posters in her in her house, and when my brother came over, he would be like, "Can you take those down before I come in your house?" When I say my family's religious, bro. Okay. Ah, oh, like that. When I say like there are limitations to how we can function as people, when I go, this is too slutty for my parents. Okay. I have to cover up. 
Okay. Like I love my family. They're dope. They're fun. They'll bar- they'll feed you barbecue and beer and they'll make sure you're so happy when you leave. But as their kids, we get along better when we visit more than when we live next door to each other. So yes, do I think okay, it would now be that awesome? Makes total sense. Do I think it would be awesome to live near my parents? 100%. Mm. Okay. But I'd rather not fight with my parents every day cuz we're neighbors. Okay, that makes total sense to me now cuz I yeah. was like, huh, like no, the- cuz your dope. explanation, yeah. I think it's dope, but it's not it's not the vibe for anybody. No, I respect that. I get it. I was just curious because I'm like, okay, like I want to like I want to understand that better because I'm like, I, I would want to be close to family. So like what what might make someone say be good on that? Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. What I'm saying? I, was I just love curious, my man. family. I they're the, my mm. favorite people. They're my inner circle. I love them so much. I, we talk we text and talk every day. But, you know, it's like, okay, you ever had this happen? Maybe you haven't. I am terrified of running into my mom at the store because of how I dress. That's some different shit. I'm just going to be like, that is like, okay. That's what I'm saying. Like I, I, my in-laws will come over and I'll be like in clothes. They're very liberal. Like they, they're so liberal. Like I would, I don't even think about what Mm -hmm. I'm wearing. I'll be like in a sports bra and like workout outfit. Cause I'll be like doing my weights. They'll come in. I'm like, oh, Hey, what's up? I don't even think about it. But if that was my mom and dad coming over, I'd be like, sweater, sweater, give me a sweater. Because like they would, you know, they're just very like modesty is key. Okay. Modesty is sexy. Modesty is beautiful. Modesty gives praise to God, which is beautiful, bro. I love that with no hate to them. So it, it just makes it better that we, that I don't have to worry about running into my parents at the store. <laughs> That's an interesting background. I could not, I cannot, the most I've ever had to deal with is like, you can't eat that. You shouldn't yeah. eat like pork or like shellfish or some shit, which like was annoying, but like I, I never, never that far. So I can only mm-hmm. slightly relate to you in the sense of like being told I can't eat a certain piece of food. And sure. you know, I, I don't take it seriously. Cause I'm like, mm-hmm. look, all animals are disgusting. Watch a chicken walk around. It's eating nothing but feces. But at the end of the day, you know, it's, it is what it is, but. Yeah, that was still something I wanted to, you know, get to know about a little bit more. You um you mentioned um one thing you brought up that I think is so important for I guess like this new wave of like this young young men, like lonely young men is like knowing like what you want yeah. in a partner. Like that even like archetypes, like just knowing like okay, like sure the Instagram baddie is a baddie, but like 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 are you actually gonna like are you actually going to be with that person long term? But ironically enough, and this might be this might be a, a, a testy take, so I want to shoot it off. I kind of didn't find out until I made myself attractive enough to kind of like be good enough to date. And then I was able to figure out like, wait, hold on a second. No, 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 no. That subculture, not for me. Like I could fit in, like I can blend into any space, but like. I don't, I can't see my, I don't want to blend into that space. I don't mind visiting, but I don't want to be there for that long, or like be around for that long. Um, how would you, like, how would you promote that idea? Like, what would your advice be? Well, I have a question for you. Did, okay. w- when you were going through that transformation, would you say that along that journey, you became a healthier version of yourself? Oh, yeah. Like, like, um, I became more sane after I started actually interacting with women more. Like I was like, like the insanity ceased. So like, mm-hmm. you know, like I think one of the main reasons a lot of these guys are probably a little bit off is the lack of interaction with women. So I'd say, um, but also it's also like the trying to like socialize more and be more appealing to the opposite sex and interact more. It forces you to start filling in gaps. Am I too talkative? Am I too, am I dressing well? Do I know how to inter, like nonverbal, cl- you start to realize the holes in your game. Yeah. So I'd say like, it's not even just a matter of like, oh, I'm dating now, I'm chill, but also the aspect of like, you just become a, a more well-rounded and relaxed person. I became less opinionated, oddly enough. I became less like rah, 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 like, like I just became more calm, so yeah. By exposing yourself to more women? That kind of created like a a more like, I became a lot more ch- like, that created like a certain calm, like a like an overarching calm, mm-hmm. but like trying to get to the space where I could actually be more attractive to women because you have to talk to them. Sure. So that means you're going from like being on the internet in the game all day to like talking to people. 
and then walking away from the interaction being like, oh, fuck, I fucked up. I said that or I did that. And I don't dwell on fuck ups. They usually like if I just let them sit in my head over time, they kind of just like sink in and then like Mm -hmm. I I become a little (laughs) bit different over time. But I would say the the it's like the iron sharp sharpens iron aspect of like, okay, I went out, I butted my head, I got tackled a few times. I, I got punched in the head like I, I went through that frustration and pain and like trial and error. And that was the key. Like that was the key thing that actually made me a better person overall. I just became more mellow after I actually started interacting with women. But like becoming a better version of myself, it was the process. I mean, I think so from my understanding of life from everything that I've read and everything that I've observed, like healthy is the goal and should be the goal if we're going to have a goal. And healthy (laughs) means well-rounded to me. So like healthy with finances, healthy with physical health, mental health, spiritual health, knowing who you are in the story. What's your trope? Are you a Luffy? Are you a Zoro? Are you Usopp? Or are you Chopper? Like these are different kinds of people. And if you don't know that, you're going to not know, like, where do I fit? Even now to this day, I'm always dismantling myself. And I'm like, okay, who am I today? I used to be the girl that was infamous for reading a book a day and never going anywhere without a book. Girl, I haven't held a book in like, but that was my thing for years. Even recently, now that I've been working out more, I'm like, oh, one day I'm going to wake up and people are going to be like, oh, she's the girl who works out. Okay. Not just the girl who says she's working out because it's actually going to show in like a much more prominent way. And then you, mm-hmm. you know, how you go from like the fat guy to the muscular guy, you yeah. changed, you actually change categories. And so the question mm-hmm. is, are you changing a category that feeds your consciousness and your joy? Or are you changing one that's for other people? Mm, I've never once actually made a change from that perspective. Which one? Of like joy and like mm. all that other like important <clears throat> stuff. Um, no, nah, I've been full, like, total, like, just degenerate. Like, I'm dead ass. Like, I totally, like, look, what's going to get me as close to the destination of just, like, money, women, success as possible, all that other important, like, godly stuff? Yeah. <laughs> was that Jim Jones balling? Like, I, I was not <laughs> worried about that at all. I'm just like, sure. look, man, like, I've spent my whole life in the church. Mm. Mm-hmm. I, like, honestly, like, I... <laughs> I don't want to start giving too much adv- like advice because mm-hmm. like I'm such a like I was saying before like I've kind of like lost my mind in the sense that like I'm not normal in the sense that like I know that I want like hyper success I want like I want stuff that's I'm not I kind of accepted the fact that I'm fulfilled by really surface level shit but at least I know, like, at yeah. least like I know, like, OK, this is what I want to feel like my life is like in the right direction. Mm-hmm. Um, I think. Kind of. I think it's OK to try to develop yourself from like baser or more service level desires. Um, eventually you should obviously start introspecting and trying to figure out what makes you happy and joyful and stuff like that, which relates to the whole, like, I want 10 hoes. Like, no, you actually just want one wife. Like you want kids, you want a normal house. Like that's what you want to be Mm -hmm. joyful and happy. Um, but ironically enough, I kind of have reached a space where like, I know like, okay, like, like when I'm 30, bro, like I can't go partying. Like, like this has to end. Like, you like the, the flights, the parties, hopefully this stuff happens, but like all the cool stuff, Mm -hmm. there's gotta be a time limit. Cause I know that like, there will be a time where I'm like not fulfilled by that anymore but i do think it's not necessarily a bad thing for people to derive change from service level stuff what do you think about that do you think it's dangerous do you think people should like shove it off as quickly as pot what do you think no 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 i well okay first it depends on the what kind of a person you are so if you're like my brother who at like 10 years old was like i'm gonna be a catholic and i'm gonna be a husband and i'm gonna be a he he so i always say my brother was born into a bubble that was perfect for him and he's gonna die in that bubble Okay. It is a, and he always jokes. He's like, "Am I a level five? I was like, "You're a level two, you Catholic." Okay, and like he's okay. just like, "This is my bubble, and I'm never leaving it." And he like loves this bubble. And he says, like, "I had for the, he's the kind of guy who like his trauma level was like kind of normal, and he learned the right love lesson, but he never had like debilitating trauma. He never had like his life was just good. He had a good good hand dealt to him, and I'm happy for him. He's he does out of all the people I don't believe in deserve, but like." I'm glad it went to him. I just like, he's a very good person. And um, 
he asked me one time, he's like, why do you got to touch the stove so much, bro? He's like, can you just learn from observing? I was like, apparently not. <laughs> okay, apparently not. Right. And so I think I did chase like sort of like freedom, right? I left my parents' house at 21 and I was like, okay, who am I? What am I doing with my life? What kind of job do I want? What kind of girl do I want? What kind of life? Like, what, what do I want? And I was bar hopping and partying with friends and working and kind of depressed and buying makeup and buying high heels and figuring out, like, is this what I want? Is this what I want? Is this what I want? Is this what okay. I want? And I spent a lot of money, got into a lot of debt trying to figure out, like, is this what I want? I bought cars. I did all this stuff. I was like, is this what I I, I bought? My friends always say, like, Brittany gets new cars. Like, people get new boyfriends. I was like... Whoa. I got a lot of new cars, okay? And okay. um, those were bad financial decisions. I made a lot of bad financial decisions. And I was seeking sort of the thrill. Man, you ever buy a new car? It feels great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't even fall to it this point. It feels fucking right. great, bro. Okay? I love a new car, but damn. Like, okay. So I started to have these, like, realizations where I was like, I'm chasing something. And I'm using, like, okay. money as a way to chase. I remember when I went to therapy, and she goes, um, so you have borderline personality disorder. I was like, okay. And she was, I was like, what does that mean? And she goes, well, um, they tend to have, like, a relationship with, like, either lots of sex or lots of spending money. Which one are you? And I was like, well, I haven't had sex with, like, very many people. I'm like, depending on how you count it, like, less than 10. And she goes, okay, what about money? I was like, oh, I got, like, 60K on a credit card right now, girl. She's like, Brittany. And I'm Yo. like, ma'am. <laughs> It's, you know, I paid it off eventually, but girl, like I have had so much fucking and nothing. Rashad, if you look at that credit card statement, it's like Starbucks, earrings, makeup, high heels, dumb shit, dumb shit, dumb shit, dumb shit, dumb shit. <laughs> like I was so bad with money and all of it. I was chasing some sort of aesthetic lifestyle, some sort of vibe, some sort of like eating out all the time. Oh, my God, the way I would eat out. And so, you know, what I look pushed that? Where, is that. where did that come from? The want, like the eating out and spending money, like the like the desire for an aesthetic lifestyle. What was the driver behind that? One control. I wanted okay. to feel in control of my life, but two, I would look at pictures of people and be like, I want to look like that. I want to be that category of person. So I'd straighten my hair and try to look emo. I'd buy, you know, get tattoos and do high heels and be like, I'm gonna be like Kevin D. I'd be like, okay, no, I'm gonna be like this girl. Oh no, 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 this person. Oh, I really like this person. I'm like, okay, who am I? And it was like a sense of like, who am I? But also I thought if I could just attain this, if I could be like jackass and have a group of friends that prank each other, if I could just like mm -hmm. have a, like, this is so dumb. You want to hear, so this is why I think sometimes I have autism or the dreamers. I have a dreamer attitude, bro. In my early okay. 20s, this is so fucking stupid. I've never told this story. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm such a child. I'm a big child. In my early, early 20s, okay. I had a collab with a big YouTuber. And I was really excited. I thought this collaboration was going to make me so much money. I started Googling local mini mansions that were worth like a million five. So my friends and I could live in the mansion together. Not the friends. Not the friends. Do you want to know how much money I made off that collaboration? How much? <laughs> like literally like a hundred dollars. <laughs> you were plotting and planning all this big shit the whole time? I went looking for houses around the neighborhood. I would drive around, find the house, like research the house. I was fully convinced this was my opportunity. And you know how many times God or goddess or whoever it is sent me that lesson? Probably like 15, 20 times. Oh, here's another big collab. So I can remind you, you're not going to be that girl that gets the one off and becomes like a successful YouTuber. Oh, here's another lesson because you still haven't figured it out. That's not your story, Brittany. Mm. It's not okay. my story. Ever since I was young, you know how many people told me when I was 25, 26, like, why are you still doing YouTube? You haven't got that one off. You've had so many collaborations. Why aren't you famous yet? And I'm like, why? Good question. How many people? I hear Blair White all the time. Oh, yeah, one of my videos went viral and that was it. And I'm like, what? Like, that was never, even my videos with millions of views. I made like 5K off this video. Wasn't the reason I became a successful YouTuber. Mm -hmm. So there was like life lessons the universe kept sending me where she was just like, it's not you, girl. This is not your story. You're slow and steady. And so mm -hmm. when I realized like, okay, something was severely wrong with me, it ended up being my health and I ended up doing everything I could to organize that health, mental, fiscal, everything, physical, everything, every part of me. I was like, okay, that's going to be my goal now. 
And that is going to tell me, including my values, what I actually want and need from life. And that started my introspection journey like four years ago. Now I'm four years clean, no depression, no suicidal ideations, no self-harming, none of the like big issues I was dealing with. My borderline's basically in remission. My husband hasn't even seen it yet. I don't even like, sometimes I th I'm pretty sure I wouldn't even get diagnosed with it now if I got re-diagnosed. It's like everything is good, but everything had to be so bad for it to be good. Mm, okay. But I, I was entitled. I kept thinking like, I'm going to have one good collab and that's it. I'm going to, ooh, look, all these people in my DMs, all these people in my phone book. Interesting. Okay, okay that's interesting. Yeah, that wasn't hmm. my story, you know? Hmm. Yeah, because it's like, I've thought about like what drives like my motivations. Mm -hmm. And um, it wasn't control, but it was more so the aspect of like, because I always had like this ego of like, man, I'm like, I'm so cool. Like, I'm the greatest. Like, I'm, I'm you know, and then like, I'm like, I'm like, I get to middle school. I'm the, one of the shortest kids in the class. I love basketball, but I was one of the shortest kids in the class. Yeah. And I just come back from the Virgin Islands and I'm back in Georgia, which is where I'm from. Mm. And all these kids are better than me at basketball. Now, I thought I was I was good at it, but clearly not. And it was like the first disappointment. Like, I didn't make it on the team. Seventh grade didn't make it on the team. And I'm like, what the fuck is happening? Then, like, all my classmates were getting taller. And, like, that's when, like, the social status and all that shit starts to form. And I'm like, I'm kind of like the sitting. I, I think I'm, like, super fly and I'm, like, the greatest thing ever. But, like, I'm kind of, like, watching from a distance as everyone else is kind of, like, having their experiences and shit. And, like, I don't know, like, I still, like, had this conspiracy theory in my head that, like, my classmates were, like, boxing me out of, like, social interactions outside of school. So I'm like, okay, like, I'm getting done up right now. Like, this is, I'm in a bad spot. I feel like that was kind of, like, um, it was kind of, I'm kind of glad it happened because it kind of forced me to be a lot more, I guess, socially cognizant. But also, like, really, really, like obsessed with just like trying to make it mm. but i guess like maybe i guess like i don't know i guess i was trying to understand like like where is like is my are my motivations or is what drives me coming from like i don't want to say trauma but just like little disappointments and stuff like that like For sure. where does it come from and stuff like that because i would like to believe like it's like a factory setting like oh i'm just naturally ambitious but it really is sometimes like little disappointments here and there kind of like give you that feel of like whoa 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 like i do think i'm supposed to be successful but like a, l a few things happen here and there that kind of humbled me and like made me realize like oh shit like i'm not that guy but yeah i was curious about what your explanation was because i had discovered mine and i was like i wonder what makes other people go down these paths of like mm. buying i would have bought the cars too i mean to be honest. buying the cars and all this other shit like i, I wanted i was just curious i wanted yeah, to know no, i you know i've had so many opportunities in my life and i every time i had an opportunity and it didn't feel right and i would turn it down or maybe it felt right and then it didn't lead where i thought it was gonna lead it was like the universe reminding me one to stay humble and two, to be honest with you, not that I believe in a God, but if there was one, they knew I would have been able to handle any kind of success at a young age. Mm, okay. So many people can, and I don't think I would have been one of those people. I was a very different person 10 years ago. Like very different. There's a foundation to Brittany that's always been the same, but I mean, the way I thought, the way I talked to people, the way I even like treated people, so different um so political so like you're the devil if you vote like a certain way like so like close-minded like just you know it just would have been so different whether it was republican britney or progressive britney she was just so like black and white and so okay. i just don't think i would have been able to handle fame and then i would have been known like like i think about it now like oh my gosh that would have been such a weird thing to handle at such a young age when i was already dealing with my mental health in some ways i do think i was born with this personality absolutely i think we all are born with our personalities i don't think those change i think the relationship we have with our personalities do like look i'm always going to be this person but this person is going to change so much and she's not going to change her foundation but she's going to change aesthetically she's going to change in the way that she has a relationship with things and I just want to make sure I'm always having a healthier relationship with things. And I think that takes a lot of patience because like even my brain is like. And then I'm like, Shh, patience is what the universe is going to teach me for the rest of my life because, girl, I don't have it. But it is the best thing to practice is like patience. 
Um, Mm -hmm. and right now I'm all about my joy and my curiosity. So that's what I tell my audience is that I think you should seek out your joy, which is like furthest from evil and evil, not like that construct we talk about in like animes, but kind of furthest from your joy. Things that leave you in a rut, things that make you bitter, things that make you hate and resent people. All of that is furthest from joy. And joy is the answer. The question is like, what does your joy look like? And your joy has to come from a real relationship with like your consciousness. And then you have to decide like, well, how do I even have a relationship with who I am? Is it through a religion or through a culture or through family? Because all of that could be valid, but we don't even know that. We don't even know why. Like, I love just asking people, like, why? And then seeing, like, how much they thought about it, myself included. My husband does that to me all the time. He's like, why? And I was like, and then I have to sit there and think for, like, two hours. Like, you're right. Why did I say that? Why do I think that? Like, why do I feel that? It's really hard and it's exhausting to do all that emotional labor, but I do think it's necessary. Mm-hmm. And I I think I'm – um. I'm less convinced people are, they need to do it when they're young. I think that they need to do it when they're ready. What's ready like to you? What does ready, what does ready sound like to you? Oh, mm, vaguely when it makes sense. Like when it's natural, like you can force yourself to try to get something but you know when you're working on a, like a puzzle or like something for work and you're just like, bro, I'm not getting this. I need to take like a 10 minute break. And then mm-hmm. it like refreshes your brain and then you come back and you see it in a different way. That yeah. 10 minute break could be 10 years, could be five years, could be your whole lifetime. I just think like sometimes mm-hmm. we try to force ourselves to problem solve something that we're not even the person we need to be to problem solve it. Okay. And so I think like it's about gathering tools and figuring it out. So when it comes to dating or relationships, it's like I know what you want in your end goal. Like you see your life. The question is what do you got to do to be that person? Maybe it's getting a six pack. It's probably more or less being a good person and having values. It's probably more or less growing into an adult and who you are. Now you might be the story where you meet your partner young. My brother was 22 and 21, I think him and his wife. And that's beautiful, bro. That's so young. Oh my God. That would have changed my whole life if I had gone married in my early 20s. But like they did that and it was the right decision for them because they wouldn't have been mm-hmm. anywhere else. It wasn't like they were going to move to the big city and like try something new with their life. That's not their story. So the question right. is like, what is your story? And I don't think a lot of people are willing to admit like, oh, but I wanted that one. And it's like, do you? Because I wanted the top CEO girl. I wanted the Mm. walking to work at 5 a.m. I wanted like so much in my head. I was like, I'm going to drive the cars and I'm going to have the money and I'm going to live in a high rise and I'm going to have this. And then as I got older, I was like, why aren't I aiming for that? Why do I keep like choosing to watch anime and hang out with my friends and go to the gay club? (laughs) None of that has to do with waking up at 5 a.m. and fucking Mm. being a CEO. And even now, that's not who I am. But at one point in my life, I thought that was my dream. Hmm. So you you figured out that you wanted to go in a different path. Was it from having that moment of like, okay, now is the time to like ask why? Where was that moment where you said, okay, like trying to like be this like character from this Instagram post mm. or whatever? When did you like make that like no, that this is where I'm supposed to be? Um, I had noticed that I was going into a like I was having a pattern of like self destruction. Okay. And I noticed that I was repeating mistakes. And I mm. do not like repeating mistakes. So right. I was like, okay, girl, this is our like fourth time. That's a lot. Even okay. for us, that's a lot. So one day I remember like realizing like, oh, this is you. Like your life's not happening to you. You're creating your life. And like this is what you decided to do. And I was like, oh, I'm embarrassed. And I was like, oh, my yeah. God. Like I'm ashamed of my life. And I didn't realize until that moment, like, I made this. Like, you make your bed, you got to lay in it. Yeah. I made my bed. And it was disgusting. Just not to standard. And so I remember I was sitting with my best friend and I looked at her and I was like, I was dealing with a breakup, of course, a a getting back together breakup relationship. And I looked at her, I was like, and I blocked him and I was like, and I looked at her, she goes, okay, but like, is this like every other time? I was like, no. This is it. And she goes, are you sure? And I had like literally cried to her parents about this boy. And I was like, no, mm-hmm. this is it. I just had an epiphany. He said the last thing I, he will ever say to me. And it was, it was the last thing he ever said to me. 
And to this day, I'm so proud of myself because that was truly it. But I, I knew Rashad, I knew every time before though I was changing, I hadn't fundamentally changed. And in that moment, it felt like a transformation had occurred where I went from being the fat girl to the skinny girl or skinny girl to the fat girl, whatever happened, something drastically changed and I realized it. And then I packed my bags and I moved to Arizona and I restarted my life. And it was the best decision I ever made, but my life was falling apart and I was the reason for it. Mm. And now my life is successful and I'm the reason for it. But interesting, it's not me alone and it never is. Your life is destructive because you choose it because you choose the people who are in it. My life is successful because I chose the people in it. Okay. So it's not you. It's not that you do it alone, literally, but you do make the absolute decision of who to have in your life. And I've been making better decisions. Okay, that's yeah. That was I, I was curious because I'm like, I've had those moments too where I'm like, I haven't because I'm young, kind mm. of. Um, um. I kind of had those moments where I'm like, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Like, I want to be this big YouTuber and stuff like that. And I'm convinced it's going to happen. But then, like, sometimes I'm like, man, am I moving like one? Like, I'm up at, like, 2, 3 a.m. playing, like, Crusader Kings 3 and, like, Victoria 3 and all these bullshit games. And I'm just, like, playing I'm playing games. And I'm like, I'm like, ah, uh, because you always want it sooner. And sometimes I've rationalized it to myself. I'm like, well, I'm 20. I'm 20. I was 22 like last month. I turned 23 last month. And I was like, man, thank you. And I was like, man, I'm 22. I'm not ready for like, I'm not ready for like all this shit. Like, I'm not ready. But then like, it's like you said, you kind of have that look around where you start surveying the scenery and you're like, okay, this is wrong. 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 And I'm complete. I have the controller. It's not like someone else is like driving the ship. And it was one of those moments where I like I kind of had to like come to terms with it for a little bit. I haven't fully embraced it the way you have, but like hearing you say it was mm. like, okay, like I should probably really embrace that a little bit more because I don't want to be 25 still like rolling my wheels in the mud with this stuff. Like I want to be 25 and it's worked out and like mm -hmm. everything is kind of like in the right direction. So hearing you like break that down was like okay like that made sense like okay i can i can stick to that and that makes sense so that was definitely a good piece of advice because um i'm kind of like going through that phase where like i'm realizing like okay this youtube shit is for the long haul it's not overnight mm -hmm. it's gonna take time yeah. i've had channels i had my first channel ever get deleted like four years ago <laughs> like i've had all sorts of ups and downs and shit so yeah that was definitely some good insight I noticed you you were um you did that video about that self help guru that was yeah. like talking about like I don't care what the data says. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> some shit like that. And um in the video it then like went to some guy who was doing like some like video essay. And um he was talking about um like the dangers of self improvement and stuff like that. I got some toxic takes for you if you Yeah. If you if you're ready for them, hit me. I'm not gonna lie, I do kind of believe that. I think that um. I think that people kind of underestimate, and maybe it's like it depends on how invested you are and how much of a fuck you give. Mm. Um, but I feel like there is, like, there is like a there's a. There's a subset of people that actually I remember I mentioned this to you. I said when I was watching Red Bull content for the first time, a lot of them would kind of mention like most of y'all aren't gonna take this seriously. You're kind of just here to hear me talk about how women ain't shit. And then there's like a small percentage of you guys that actually like want out of this loneliness, this brokenness, this like fatness. Like I do think that on some level, you kind of have to embrace and young men should embrace a kind of like almost self-detonation mm. to an extent where you need to you need to like you, you have to start butting your head you need to go you need to go to the gym and obviously like, you know all of this stuff is positive but i do think young men do need to for a second like forget about all that other shit like how to be a good husband and boyfriend and like how to be a good person for just one second because you're probably not an asshole but for like a good year or maybe two focus on how to actually like be attractive mm. because the unfortunate reality and this is going to sound fucked up and toxic as fuck but fuck it i'm sending it 
when you're like 19 to like 25 no one gives a fuck about any of that shit Mm. and you can kind of like sit there and like pontificate and philosophy if that's even philosophize or whatever the fuck about you know being a good partner and being a good person all this stuff and that's important but i think that it's really really underrated and underestimated like how much of like an abyss a lot of young men are looking into and i've kind of looked at an abyss too i was like 20 20 20, i was like 21 and i'm like okay i'm 21 no girlfriend no money but that's fine because i just got out of the army after breaking my ankle I'm kind of like floating, but I'm looking around me and everyone's doing just fine. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there's a significant amount of young men who feel that way. And I feel like the left or like the blue pill advice is going too fucking soft. I think young guys do need to like hunker down a little bit, harden up a little bit, toughen up a little bit, and really focus on being a little bit more hyper masculine. Mm. For like a good two years. Forget about all that other soft shit. Forget about all that reasonable shit. For like two years, you need to actually start tapping into just pure masculine energy for like a good two years straight. If you don't like it, fuck it. But like give it two years because if you don't, you're going to be miserable for the rest of your life. And that's my, it's like my crazy psychotic take. But <clears throat> that's funny. Last night, my husband and I were watching TikToks together and we came across this TikTok where it was like this guy like working out with his guru and the, he's like doing these pull-ups and his guru's like hitting him on the abs, you know, like with the stick. And okay, then he's like, crazy. you know, he's doing all these things. And I'm like, man, men are such masochists, bro. They get a heart on this. They're like, look how tough I am. My guru's hitting me with a stick. And my husband mm. looks at me and he, I go, I kind of want to do that. And I was like, I hate myself. And I was like, there's a part of my brain that's like, I want to be Kill Bill status. I want to train. I want to be told I can't even eat rice unless like, I can pick it myself. Like, I want to be told, like, I want to go through such a... <laughs> Listen, as a girl who was often called a boy because I was raised as a boy, that's what my dad always says. It's a joke. But, but he says that. He goes, I raised you as a boy. And I go, okay, there is something in my brain that admires like hyper masculinity in, se- in the in the sense that like I want to think I can survive like in the wilderness fighting a bear. <laughs> like that's why we have a bear emoji for my members. Guys, bear emoji in the chat cuz I can fight a bear and Sneeko at the same time, guaranteed. I, hate bears. I love bears. They're so cute, but I want to I want I just <laughs> Bro. you're fucking crazy. Bro, I want to hug a bear cuz they never kill you on the first hug. So if I hug a bear once, I know I'm going to survive it. Name someone who hugged a bear once and died. You can't. You might have a point. You might have it's a point. It's always the guy who hugged the bear a hundred times. And I'm like, idiot. That nine, yeah, that 100 yeah, time got him. Times. <laughs> no, I'm not. You know? I, I kind of, I, did you, I posted a video. If you didn't see it, that's fine. But I posted a video um, called, um, uh, when I fist fought with a broken ankle. No, what? I don't know if you've seen that one. No, no, yeah, no. I uploaded it like two days ago. Okay, tell me. So, um, it was, when I was in the army, I was 19. I, uh, I broke my ankle from sliding down the wall, snapped it in half. My foot was like all the way around and it had to be put back together with plates and screws. So I came back to the bay. The bay is like, we're like 50, 50, all 50 of us degenerates live in one spot. Yeah. And I came back and I was a top bunk guy. So I had to come down from the top bunk and take a new bed. Damn. Now, after I broke my ankle, a lot of guys quit. They were like, oh, I don't want to go out like Crenshaw. Oh, my God. Oh, a lot of them quit. And, like, the drill sergeants, they play mind games. So a lot of them were like, he broke his ankle and he still wanted to train. You're a bitch. You know, mind games and all this bullshit. But luckily for me, enough of them had quit to where I could have an empty, bu- uh, empty bottom bunk. Mm-hmm. So I ended up bottom bunking under this kid who would, like, get revenge on you by, like, taking your sheets and, like, wiping them up his ass or his, his crotch. So... Sir. I'm telling you, this is Sir. a real story. Damn. So, so I thought he was joking because I'm 18, I'm naive, I'm a kid, I don't really get it. And he threatens the kid that sleeps like adjacent to me on the top bunk, and he's like, you know, I'm gonna wipe your sheets up my ass and blah blah blah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fart on your sheets. I'm gonna all this other shit. And I'm like, all right, he's just joking. So I told the guy, I'm like, yo, Alvarado, he's gonna do blah 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 to your sheets. Now I'm thinking nothing of it. I'm thinking it's a joke. Then he's like, oh, Crenshaw, you're next. So then I'm like, oh, shit, this is my fucker's not playing. And then it, like, registered to me. I'm like, is it because my ankle's broke? Like, why does he think, like, I'm the, I'm the one to, to, do, to try this with? So I'm like, all right, cool. Now, me, like, I'm kind of, like, 
I'm always, I like to fall back and like look and see what's going to happen next before I make a move. So like for the next week or two, the, the threats just keep mounting up. Eventually he was like, you know, I asked him, I'm like, so like, why are you, like, why is this your go-to threat? Like, what's going on? Like, can we reason here? Like, can we talk about this? And he's, you know, he's basically holding us all at booty hole point, like mm -hmm. gunpoint, but like booty hole point. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I'm Jewish. My religion says eye for an eye. So like, like, I will get back at you. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's not <laughs> like what they meant. Like, I don't think that's how that works. But I kind of realized, like, okay, I'm dealing with someone who's using religious text as justification for why they're about to wipe my sheets up their ass. So I realized, okay, my, like, I'm out of options here, okay? But I was kind of like, my ego, my ego took a big hit where I'm like, this motherfucker thinks I'm a bitch because my ankle's broken. Okay, okay, like, nah. Mm -hmm. So eventually I, I confronted him in front of the entire platoon and I'm like, this motherfucker's wiping his sheets up, asses and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, to top it all off, I'm going to fight this motherfucker because he thinks I'm With pussy. With a broken ankle? No. 100%. It will, part of it was also because, like, my dad was always pressuring me as a young, at a young age. He was like, you know, you're a soft guy. You need to always, like, make sure that when people try you, you shut it down. Mm -hmm. Like, no, there's nothing wrong with being soft. But, like, when, you, when someone's coming at you, shut it down because you're not going to get a second chance. So I was like, all right, cool. So I confront him. And I'm like, yo, like, let's fight in the laundromat. So there's a bunch of, like, washing machines and drying machines in the laundromat. And everybody starts jumping up on them and, like, yelling and acting a fool. And we both go in on both sides. And I'm in crutches. I cannot walk. Bro. I'm in crutches. <laughs> so, like, Bro. I swear to God. I, I, yo, when I tell you the ego is through the roof, like, oh man, I refuse to be a bitch. I'm like, you are not about to, like, bitch me. Broken ankle or not, you, you're about to see me. So I crutch, I crutch in, and he walks in on the other side, and we just meet in the middle, and we just start swinging. And um, needless to say, I did not win that fight. I didn't get the shit beat out of me, but I did catch a few punches. Yeah. I ended up with lockjaw for like a week, Oof. but it was no big deal. I mean, he was about to body slam me, and they, they ended the fight because like, bro, he can't stand. You can't body slam. Like, if you knock him out, it's one thing, but if sure, you body sure, slam sure. him, you can't do that. So... They ended the fight. I got saved because I had friends there. They, if I weren't their friends, they probably would have let me be like an entertainment casualty. Yeah. Like, oh, you know, you know, collateral. That was funny. But they saved me. And the point of the story is, um, I definitely like, I think all young men have to like, you gotta fucking like, I, I think you should give in a little bit to that like hyper masculinity. Sure, you sure, gotta sure. explore it just a little bit. Cause I know it's like, to, by all means, interrupt. Did he wipe his butt on your sheets? I don't know. Okay, so let me tell you this. Let me tell you. So, like, I would inspect my sheets yeah. every day for, like, residue. <clears throat> Didn't find anything. But I took the threat seriously because, like, they just felt, they just felt serious. I'm like... Well, I wonder if the fight <laughs> made him rethink his decision to target you. Uh, he probably really went through with it then because I didn't just fight him. I told the entire platoon, like, yo, look at the guy we got over here. So it was kind of like, I destroyed, I, I made an attempt to destroy his reputation. And then yeah, I also, yeah. like, we fist fought. Um, I don't know if he did. I mean, I slept on the floor for, like, two weeks after that. I was like, okay, I'm just going to grab all my stuff and sleep on the other side of the bay on the floor. Mm. I'm not going to subject myself to booty hole sheets. I'm good on How that. How did it help so I just, you doing the fight with him? Honestly, it helped in the sense that, like, we, you could call it ego, but, like, it just felt good to know, like, I can trust myself to stand up for myself. Mm. An an broken ankle or not, I'm going to do it. Yeah. And it also helped me in the sense that, like, I earned the respect of everybody. Because I was on, the, on my phone all day in the platoon, like, listening to music. Not in the platoon, in the bay. So, like, a lot of them probably, like, you know, like, Crenshaw, this fat fuck just sitting on the bed, just on the phone, like, this motherfucker. Um fighting with a broken ankle yeah. definitely like it, it cleared up the any misconceptions about me and like whether i'm like a stand-up guy or not like it was very much proven yeah so it was an ego thing but it was also like a i feel like it was a masculinity uh, you see sneeko like fighting these people and like getting all these fights it's kind of like the same thing except like i actually had to do this because there was no other way like mm -hmm. i had to make sure this person understood like you cannot wipe my sheets up your ass yeah, 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 but yeah. um yeah, I mean, this is a tr this is a true story, bro. And like, 
there is a mat there is an ego to it mm. and my dad told me the same he was like look go do it like fight like you got to do what you got to do because like you got a broken ankle people are going to want to try you because you got a broken ankle so like do what you got to do so yeah i i relate to that whole like like fascination with like hyper masculinity and i'm gonna be this bad motherfucker i think young men should explore it as best they can for a little bit because i feel like you need to have some sort you got to be in touch with it a little not a little bit to a good enough extent not only to be attractive to women but also to just be content with yourself i feel like some guys they're not into it but i don't know i would say i would say that life is about balance as everyone has said Mm -hmm. before us and I would say that something about masculinity correlates with confidence, which correlates with like a trust of the self. Like one thing that mm-hmm. I will say that I feel like I have, you know, because my husband always jokes like I suffer from toxic masculinity, me. And he, he's just you? like, You're, yeah, because like there's the big joke, like I really I'm not exaggerating when I say like my dad not only raised me as a boy, but I. I judge myself through the lens of like how to be the best man in the room. Mm, okay. I've never identified with being like the best girl in the room because like women weren't aspiring to do the things I wanted until I met those women. Okay. Then I jumped into a different bubble and I found those women. And then I recontextualized the women in my own life. And I was like, oh no, like there's a lot here. But like I really value, I mean, look at me, I'm the breadwinner in my relationship. Like I really okay. thrive uh, being like a working person and thinking about those things. But mostly I thrive also my ability to like survive a situation. Which is why I think mm. my assault was so like mind shattering for me because I was like, I froze. I froze. Like I, this person who prided herself and being so capable and so tough. And like I when shit hits the fan, I'm ready. I wasn't ready. And so I've spent my life like getting ready, not for the next time, because it's a horrible way to think, but you know what I'm saying? The next time I'm ready. <laughs> but like it's mm-hmm. one of those things where like life will teach you lessons and it will teach you a humbling. That is about a humbling. I definitely believe in like a universal humbling. The life will tell you like, oh, is your ego telling you you're like super tough? Let's see. Let's fucking test yeah. that. And I got tested and I failed my test, bro. But what I did learn from that moment and I think what I take with me moving forward is like it it doesn't define me. What defines me is my ability to right. get back up, which is a very masculine idea. Get back right. up. Get up mm. and like getting up is everything for me. So like I I, th- I think about these Gen Z girls. So I'm worried about Gen Z girls a little bit where I'm looking at them and I'm like, get up. Get up. You're not getting up. And I can see you not getting up. You're freaking out over like the tiniest life lesson. Has, like life gave you this lesson and you're already crumbling. Holy shit. Get up. And so a part of me is like, how do I like m- give these girls the trait of masculinity without losing their femininity? I think the fear is that masculine men are afraid to dabble in femininity because they're afraid they're going to lose their masculinity. And women are afraid to dabble in masculinity because they're going to lose their femininity. You're not. You're just going to find your balance between the two. You've got to have the balance. And then your set personality will probably have one more than the other. Me, obviously, I think people describe me as more masculine than feminine. But also, Mm. like, it makes sense for my personality type. I've been this way my whole life. So, like, that makes sense. Or, like, my brothers met my husband and they're like, He's kind of soft. I was like, your mom's soft. I was like, you know, I was like, I was sitting there like, yo, you're crazy. Well, like, you know, it's my mom, you know what I mean? But like, okay. But like, there's a joke of like my, I'm, I've always been the more masculine partner, every partner I've ever dated. And I think I need that balance. I need the balance of like my partners. So that's where the, that's where like, I could beat you up, bro. Stuff comes from when I'm watching your content, all the threats and all. That comes up growing up with a brother. My brother called me the other day to catch up. He's like, bro, bro, flex, bro. And I was like, you flex, bro. And like, we're literally like, that's what I'm saying. Like, I have brothers that like my whole life not only like called me up to be like, how many push-ups you do today? Literally, my little bro checks me the other day. How many push-ups you do today? And I was like, oh. and that's the relationship. Like, we don't call my sister and do that, by the way. My sister's femme as fuck. Like, we don't call her up. We're like, how many push-ups you do today? She goes to the gym, but it's not the same energy. She doesn't want to wrestle. She doesn't want to hang out with us. She's wanting to like fucking go hunting with us. Like she's like, no, she's not very girly, but she's still not like, she's the nerd. She's like, "Mm -mm, nope. So there is something about like, even within myself. So I do have a pride in masculinity. I think men should have a pride in masculinity. I just don't think they should be afraid to dabble in the femininity. 
Mm. I would argue that Gen Z women are actually more tough than Gen Z men. You think so? Yeah. Really? Tell me about that. What does that mean when you say that? What, what well, kind look of girl at them. They're, archetype? They're what? getting everything done. Oh, like they are. They're getting everything. They're accomplishing all the shit that we can't even pa we can't even do fucking schoolwork, okay? And this comes from somebody who has struggled with schoolwork the whole life. Women are going to college, they're getting jobs. I mean, if I had to judge who's actually like getting back up, it's definitely not us. Damn. So I would argue that there is a. I think I know exactly what you're talking about, like a, an ideological lack of masculinity in the sense of like not being able to withstand the 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 toughness of the world on an ideological level like yeah. succumbing to like group yeah. think and like not being able to confront certain things so in that aspect you're actually on point um but i would argue like in a general sense i think gen z chicks are actually like okay looking let me like, say it like this you know how like the red pillars will be like or the the masculine people will be like um uh people are so soft kids are so soft everyone's so soft nowadays I'm like, you mm -hmm. could be a little softer, my bro. But then I look at these girls and the girls are like, why isn't everyone nicer? And why isn't the world, I'm generalizing so hard right now. Why isn't the world more mm -hmm. ideal? And why is not I'm like, grow the fuck up. And I'm like, oh, you could be a little tougher and you could be a little nicer. And like, there's like this weird, like, okay, wait. I, I think people are just going too hard. And so they're not meeting in the middle. So when I hear like Gen Z people be like, who am I supposed to be dating? Who am I supposed to be with? Do you even know what category you're in? Do you even have that balance within yourself? You know what I mean? And then what does it mean when, because this is my fear. I see this in a lot of like relationships, not marriages. Marriages actually do fairly well when you're married in a certain statistic, but relationships in general is like, if you're not mm -hmm. growing together, you're growing apart. Okay. And often you're growing apart because you're learning about yourself mid relationship and you're discovering like, oh shit, I don't actually want this lifestyle. I want something different. And then your partner's like, holy fuck, you changed on me. But the thing is, mm. like, you are going to change all along. The moment you had a moment of asking yourself why, what, and how. And, like, the dilemma is, like, I don't think we're teaching that particular skill to anybody. And so, of course, women are going to hyper-focus on, like, I know what I have to do. I have to be independent. I can't rely on a man. And then the men are going to go, I know what to do. I need to get a Bugatti and I need to get six packs and I need to do this. And so like they hyper focus on those things. And those are really easy to attain in a sense that like X, Y, Z, they're not easy. Like mm -hmm. nothing's easy, but you know what I mean? Like it's clear. They're straightforward. 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 Thank you. It's straightforward. Same with school. Finish school. Double down. Finish school. It's like if you have mm -hmm. the goal and you can do it, you can do it. You ever meet those people who are like, oh, I'm in school. But you know for a fact they're never going to graduate. Yeah. Yeah. They're not actually in school because they have a focus. They're in school to tell people, oh, I'm in school. I'm like, uh-huh. Or to put off the inevitable of confronting their life goals or whatever. Exactly. You know, how that goes. Exactly. Yeah. So I look at two different – so what, even when I was like – um, when I'm dating or courting or when I'm looking at my friends and my friends go, oh, I have so many great friends in my life. But they're always just like picking up new hobbies all the time. They claim are going to be their next like job that are never going to mm -hmm. be their job. But okay. like the – that's the the trope they are. That's the – even I in my 20s would do that all the time. Like, is this my job? Is this my job? Is this my job? Is this my job? And the the joke was like, what is Brittany into this week? Okay. And so when you know who you are in that regard, I think you can have a better relationship with sort of like not only moving forward but understanding that you're like missing that balance. You know what I'm mm. saying? So like in terms of adding more masculinity into your life, I, so, I associate masculinity with career – because I associate um, the forcefulness you need in order to work. I think that is a masculine trait. Mm -hmm. Even though you use femininity within your jobs, like caregiving and stuff, you still have to have the masculinity of showing up and fighting your patients, fighting your clients, fighting, like fighting in general is what I think is masculine. So I mm -hmm. think in order to be successful, you have to be masculine, which is why these women who are going to school and getting houses are told what? They're masculine. They're too masculine. Mm -hmm. But why is that masculine? Mm. Well, providing is considered a masculine thing for one. It like is. most, like for you, you're comfortable with being the main provider. But most women know for sure they're not comfortable with that. So it's like they're looking for a guy who can top their masculinity. And I think a lot of men are saying, "Well, instead of me topping your masculinity, I want you to stop being so masculine." Yes. And that's yes. probably never going to happen yes. because we're living in a world where, like, women don't want to be dependent upon a guy. Like, he, let's say he dies, like, worst case scenario, he dies. And next thing you know, you're trying to figure it all out. Oh. Or maybe, you know, you didn't get an education. You don't have qualifications. You married young and then you get divorced. And now you're just mm -hmm. sitting here with a bunch of kids and you have no, like, 
you have you have no clue what to do next. So I think there's an aspect of masculinity where like as young men, Gen Z men, instead of demanding that women be less masculine, you kind of have to figure out how to be more masculine than your woman, which is very possible. Um, you don't even necessarily have to earn more. That's a big part of it. But like, um, you know, I think the, the solution for sure isn't like trying to tell women to stop being so masculine. Like, like if you're dealing with a chick that wants to like, you know, kick your ass or is like pulling up on you and like some like New York's Bronx chick that's like, you know, yo son, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, obviously you're fucked. Like you can't fix that. But like a normal girly girl who just earns more than you maybe mm -hmm. goes to, I mean, these chicks are more consistent in the gym. They're yeah. even more consistent with their diet. Like it's it's looking, it's it's not looking good for for us Gen Z dudes because women are actually like, I'd say in terms of like doing everything society says to do, women are definitely in a much more masculine frame than young men, and I think that's kind of like young men are kind of like drifting in a weird sense where they're looking for like okay what's the fucking what's the path like what's the model and then your andrew tate's come in he's buff yeah. he's in shape he's got the money he's got the women he preaches about you know um going through trauma and going through tough things in life and shit like that um but like we said before the hole in that game is like okay like now you're this super alpha chad but like can you be a father and, and, and a husband and shit like that so i think that gen z women in terms of like you said they're like ideologically too soft where like do you feel like it's a lot of these like tiktok posts where like you got to see a lot of like these gen z girls like talking up like where do you see it um uh, partially i think it's also um even though a lot of the women look like they're fiercely independent i think they also fall into the trap that a lot of people fall into which is like okay i did the thing now what and i'm like oh like, you didn't even do it necessarily for you. You did it because of a reaction to something else. Like, I don't want to be dependent right. on a man. That's a reaction to something. That's not for you. Mm. And so I'm like, okay, so you didn't do this because you're like, oh, I just love working and I want a house. You're like, I can't be dependent on a man. I'm like, oh. That's like says something else to me. So I feel like a lot of the girls, I think, okay, I'm going to generalize this particular bubble of specifically heterosexual women. They do mm -hmm. want a man who provides. They do want a man who makes more than them. They do want a man who fits that stereotype, but they also want to be independent and they also don't want to depend on a man, but they also don't know how to give that up in exchange to being sort of a woman who allows her man to make more or to lead in that particular aspect. But then they romantically want it, but then they don't know how to incorporate that into real life. So mm -hmm. I would say like the dilemma is that people want a lot of contradictory things that can work, but you have to know when to evoke them. So like, I feel like in my relationship, it's like a mood thing of like, you know, when are we focusing on, you know, emotions? When are we focusing on analyzing? When are we focusing on our, like, when we're doing the finances together, like neither of us are like, it's not that we're married. It's like, we're in business mode. Okay. Look, we spent $5 on milk this week, bro. I feel like I'm drinking a lot of milk. And it's like, that has nothing to do with like, I'm a wife and I want more milk. It's like, Hey, does this fit into the budget? And it's like, you're in like a different mode. I feel like people think your husband is always going to be in sexy mode. Your wife's always going to be in I'm ready to fuck mode or like, I'm ready to, you know, modes happen and come throughout the day but i think people think if i just get this everything will fall into place like as if life falls into place the only thing that falls into place is the t when the timing is right naturally things fall into place but everyday life you have to work at it you have to put it there and so i think these mm. women mean well i think they're amazing i'm so impressed by so many of them like I even love the talk around like explicit consent, like what a big change from when I was a growing up millennial. That's so beautiful. But you you got to do it correctly. And doing it correctly means within reason. And within reason mean, means knowing you can go beyond reason, which a lot of mm. people are not willing to admit that they can go beyond reason. You're not being reasonable. And I don't think anyone wants to have that conversation. I don't think men are being reasonable and thinking women should just settle for them. I don't think women are being reasonable and thinking I deserve a man who makes a million dollars a year. I don't think people are being reasonable when they think they deserve things. I see where masculinity comes into that. <clears throat> in the sense that like um, an aspect of masculinity is also like kind of like ideological independence. Like I've noticed and this might sound like crazy. But I've noticed that women are a lot more like, okay, 
what's the temperature in the room let me acclimate to that which is a very useful skill that men need to learn mm -hmm. like i know we like hyper like romanticize men are more independent thinkers and blah 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 you might be autistic bro <laughs> You might not, you might, you might not be reading the room, bro. You might not be like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, if yeah, all yeah. the shorties in the room are telling you that you're fucking up, you might be like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's, check the room. There's also a masculine aspect of like accepting when something isn't good enough, even when it's not fair. Mm -hmm. Like you said, like mm -hmm. um, young men accepting the fact that look, like women are earning now women are getting money now women are qualified now like the whole like please stop having rights <laughs> not gonna work Bro. you're gonna have to like you're gonna have to figure this out you know what i'm saying um i think the red pill was sane when it was like look women have what they have this is a good thing let's navigate this rather than like okay 10 wives bitches ain't shit retract voting please don't let them ha don't let them read <laughs> don't Bro. let them have books like that was where shit was like, oh, like, y'all have lost the plot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're right about the lack of masculinity, probably in maybe both mm. genders in the sense of like, women are a little bit too ideologically like, okay, where's the herd? And then men are a little bit too feminine in the sense of like, yo, like, shit sucks. Gotta get around it. Like these like fantasies of like, you know, like Sharia law 9000, but the Christian version and like it's just not it's never gonna happen and i know it's like it's really like cute and like marketable and like that's like the whole hype now but i feel like there is a feminine aspect to it where i don't i hate to call it feminine but mm. there's kind of like a let's call soft aspect sure. to sure, it sure, where sure, it's sure, like sure. you you don't want to confront this thing so you'd much rather have what's in the way be removed for you rather mm. than just like saying okay like i'm out of shape women like in shape guys let me get in shape or I don't make a lot of money. Let me get to my grind so I can have some money for, you know, my wife or kids or whatever. Bro, I feel like um, what's more soft than entitlement? Yeah, I mean, that was kind of like, that was like the, that was the, I'd say entitlement is like the first thing that dies when you start testing, when you start like trying to figure out, okay, what am I doing wrong? Entitlement has to die. Yeah. I think um, my favorite, one of my favorite Kevin Samuels clips is where he was like, dude, like, <laughs> did you see the one where he asked this guy? How big is your you know what? No. I don't know if you've ever seen <laughs> Okay, so this guy who was like I, I don't know, like maybe 29 or something, no job. Like I think he was either making like minuscule money or no job. And Kevin Samuels was like, okay, how big is your Johnson? <laughs> and he was like, I don't know, like I'm not Ron Jeremy, but like, you know. And he was like, How big is your Johnson? He's like, I, 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 so it's small. So like you think that you with a yeah. small Johnson and no money and no career think you can demand XYZ from women? He was like, You don't even have a big <laughs> you don't even yeah. have a big dick. It was like one of the it was comedy, but it was like, damn, he's not wrong. Like you can't even provide like <laughs> the base level thing and you're entitled to that extent. And I feel like um, that was the one aspect of the red pill that people don't give enough credit for. It was like a lot of these guys were ruthless to the men. It's like, dude, if you don't have anything, excuse yourself from the conversation yeah. because you can't start making demands when you don't have any leverage. Like you can't you can't do that. And I think that both men and women need to realize, like, look, like if you're a woman and you want your man to be all, you know, provider and blah, 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 like you got to be a little bit more reasonable and like in your feminine and shit. Like you can't be trying to run the relationship if he's supposed to be the one in charge. And if you're a man and you want to lead, you got to be a leader. You got to embody the traits of someone who's above in a sense. Like you got to be kind of better. Yeah. So I, I think, um, well, finish your thought. I don't want you to lose it. No, I mean, I. Good? I was done. Yeah. I was thinking about um, sort of like a confidence in relationships and how a lot of these dynamics are obviously like, I think a lot of them are motivated by insecurity and I sadly think are the foundation of the relationship as well. Like you ever hear about those relationships with like, oh, I don't even want my partner commenting on like how good looking someone else is. And I was like, oh, for real, real? And they're like, not even celebrities. I was like, for real, real? Like not even celebrities? And oh, that's, I'm that toxic, yeah. Bro, that's that shocking toxic. to me. Like I was literally- Only because like, I wouldn't do it. Only because oh. I wouldn't do it. So, like, I I try to always make sure, like, if I have a rule, I can't. So, if I'm, like, stop going to the club, I can't go to the bar anymore. Because, like, I can't tell my partner 
to not go to the club yeah if i'm frequenting the bar or like don't wear that i can't pop out with a muscle with a, with a muscle tight shirt sure, sure, sure. if i'm telling my my girl not to wear you know okay but hold up hold up hold up because like i'll be chilling with my brother and his wife and um and we'll be talking and like my my sister-in-law always says like she goes oh you know my dream guy and i was like thor and she goes thor his man bun his muscles and my brother's like i look like thor and she goes you're bald and i was like she got a point she got a point. You're bald. And like, you could see Middle Eastern men always go bald. And then it was like a big, like, okay. you know, we're so comfortable with talking. I'm like, obviously you're not as hot as Thor, bro. Okay. Like, look at him. And then like, we'll all be talking. And it's like, yeah, why wouldn't we be able to have that conversation? But then, of course, we know that it's different than if his wife was like sliding to people's DMs, which she doesn't even, why would she do that? And then like, if he was talking to other people, like they don't have opposite sex friends. So, like, my brother and his wife right. do not have opposite sex friends. They have married friends and cousins and family members and people we know, which to me mm. makes sense. If my brother came home and he was like, I have a friend who's a girl, I'd be like, no, you do not. Right. But I have friends that are men because, like, why wouldn't I? Because it's different. We don't have the same bubble. We're not the same couple. We don't do our relationships the same. My, my husband has friends that are mm. girls. Obviously, he hangs out with them. Like, they have friendships. Like, that is it. It wouldn't even make sense to me. But like, we don't even care about gender. This whole relationship doesn't even care about gender. We don't even care about it. That's versus, rare. Yeah. Well, it's not. It's not. It's not that it's rare. I think it's that it's a bubble, and the bubble itself, like, there's a whole bubble that's spread globally that doesn't give a fuck about gender as much. They just don't exist all usually in one place because we don't need to congregate together as whole communities. Whole communities that are religious, though, they're gonna like fuck with those gender roles, right? And they're going to have mm. those expectations. Like my mom keeps telling me, she goes, I know you say you don't want babies, but I swear if you just stop working, you'll want babies. And I was like, no, that's not how it works. Like if yeah, I wanted that's, babies, that's horrible. like if I wanted babies, I would stop working and have babies or like maybe I would have babies anyways. Like that's not stopping me from having babies. Right. But it's this idea of like, well, maybe it's because you're not working within the traditional gender roles. And I was like, nah, the math isn't mathing. But it's an interesting instinctual solution from her right it's a bubble speak mm -hmm. it's like well maybe if this 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 okay my point is hold on i don't want to lose my train of thought oh i look at couples and how they lifestyle like same thing my partner and i we don't go to bars and clubs mm. i don't want to do that do we go to bars here a little different there's some bars here that are like cafes with alcohol so i do go to i like those those are fun we go meet his friends so we talk about anime that's fun but i don't want to go to a okay. bar bar i don't want to go to a club club it's a lifestyle thing versus saying you can't comment on how someone looks or like it's it's fine. But I always wonder about those types of relationships. Like, are you saying you want your partner to lie to you? Because like my partner and I don't lie to each other, which means like if he has a thought or if I have a thought, like we just say it out loud. We're like, I'm so sorry. I got to say this out loud because I don't want to lie to you. But like I'm looking at that booty right now. And like we just say it. We're like on TikTok. I'm like, go back. I saw boobs. And he'll go back. He's like and we're like. And then we'll keep going. Like, mm. again, it's like, how do you not appreciate? But then it's okay if you don't either, because maybe you're religious or maybe, but what's your reasoning, I guess? I noticed you used the word insecurity, and that's also a concern for me, but in the opposite sense, right? Okay, tell me. So what if I'm dating a chick that has like a small ass, right? <laughs> and maybe I see a chick with a fat ass and I'm like, let's say I make a comment about it, right? Okay. Um... That could bother your partner. For sure. Like comparisons can be compared. That's where a lot of shit starts. You start making those comparisons. That's For where sure. a lot of the shit starts to fester. And, um, you know, uh, mm -hmm. that can bother your, that can make your, your partner but can start like having like sleep. That's because they're insecure. I don't, I honestly don't actually feel negatively about insecurity. Okay. I so, agree with you there Within too. reason. Okay. Within, within reason. reason though. Right. So, okay, yeah. fine. Tell me what's your within reason, because I'll tell you mine. Okay, so if, like, if, let's say, like, for some reason, let's say, like, for a completely innocent reason, a chick with, like, like, okay, let's say, like, for example, like, my type is, like, like white, like, thick white chicks. I don't know. That's just my type. Like, sure. let's say I'm talking to, like, maybe I'm dating a girl who's a little bit more petite. And for some reason, like, a chick that's just, like, my ideal is just talking to me for something unrelated to sex. If my chick runs down on me, what are you doing? Da, 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 that's negative insecurity. But if I'm actively comparing her to this person and voicing a uh, sexual desire for that person, her insecurity in response to that is completely understandable, which is why I would never be like, that ass though, or 
um, my type is so-and-so or that person is really attractive. I can't do it because that insecurity is pure. It's pure and it's innocent and there's nothing wrong with it to me. Sure. And I don't want to, I don't want to feed that because it can destroy relationships and people. Mm. But if she's like trying to give me like a Mike Tyson combo with a spinning back kick because I had an innocent conversation, now we're talking about like some problems here. So like, you know what I mean? Like that's, that's where I draw the line of insecurity. Okay. I, okay. Toxic insecurity to me is something that ruins our joy, destroys our relationship, destroys you as a consciousness. Like it's, it's eroding at your joy. Like, Hey, bitterness, resentment, like negative words that like are coming from a place of insecurity where you're drowning in it. I'm not about it. Look, we all have insecurities. I have insecurities. I just don't want my insecurities to ever be the reason I destroy my life. Mm. So I want to be the master of my insecurities by acknowledging them and not growing attached to the fact that they exist, but knowing they're there. So like um, somebody in the comments said it pretty perfect. Fishy, you wait, you said comparison is so different from acknowledging a different trait, I think. OK, so for me, I wouldn't compare. I wouldn't like I wouldn't go to my husband and be like, oh, you know, um, I'm so into this like aesthetic this guy has. Like unlike you, like you don't have that like that girl. Oh, first of all, but it doesn't take that second comment though. Mm. And a lot of people, it doesn't. All you got to do is talk about how you like something that maybe the other person you're dating sure. can't get immediately in that moment. Sure, sure, sure. And immediately, like the insecurity sets in. For sure. So then, one of the things that, you know, going way back into the conversation earlier about what I did to prepare, what my husband did to prepare to be my husband was like, we didn't even know each other, right? So I always like to say, like, what were you doing in 2012? Like, what were you doing with your life, you know? Because okay. we didn't know each other. He was preparing to be my husband without knowing it. He was, like, learning about his own insecurities, his own problems. He was fixing himself. So by the time we met, he could handle the fact that I was who I was. I am online. I am on the internet. I am on OF. I am doing these things. I am on, like, I am mm -hmm. this person. And he had to be a person who could be so aware of his own insecurities that they would never become a problem in this marriage and vice versa. Mm -hmm. I have insecurities and they're not going to be the, the reason this marriage fails. So um, we have a rule that we tell each other everything. And then we have a rule that we also warn each other. It feels like, Hey, I'm about to say something that might hurt your feelings. So we mm -hmm. tell each other, I'm like, okay, I'm ready. And he'll like, tell me, he's like, you have gotten fat. And I'm like, Oh, okay. I thought so. I thought so. And like, we'll talk mm -hmm. about it. And it's really freeing to have someone you trust so dearly not to have bad intentions. See, the dilemma mm. with insecurity is it could lead to you picking on your partner. It could lead to you picking a target that is your partner. And instead of fixing yourself, you tear your partner down. So I think the difference is like we're both so healthy that when we share like, oh, I think he's really attractive or like, oh, my God, I really like her. And I'm like, yeah, I really like her. Or he'll say like, we'll be looking at girls. And I'm like, do you think I could pull that off? He's like, no, your nose is too big. And I'm like, oh, you're right. It's like him first acknowledging something that's very true about my life to mm -hmm. us laughing about it. And honestly, he just means it as a fucking fact. And there's something so relieving that versus him being like, oh, yeah, babe, you could totally do that. Oh, my God. It's like, don't lie to me, bitch. You know, I couldn't pull that off. I don't want to be lied to. I would rather have complete transparency, but it's coming from such a good place. Rashad, the best place. He's the nicest, sweetest, most blunt person I've ever met. And I get all of him every day, all his inner thoughts to tell me the most honest truths. And it feels so good. So Maybe I'm soft. Well, <laughs> Rashad. <laughs> maybe i'm just soft maybe like, you're just young bro we're both in our 30s to be fair my husband and i are in our 30s we've lived lives you know but tell me maybe you're soft tell me i'm because like like the nose thing like if i was dating a chick with like a, a prominent nose i would never bring it up because i'm like man i don't know how this person's gonna feel but now i don't oh. mind it yeah but this person and they might not ever even like mentioned an insecurity about it to me but like uh, I'm always I'm always cognizant about like people's prominent traits. So like for example, you have curly hair. Some people are like insecure, like I wish it was straight. If it's not like a a compliment, I'm not gonna mention anything about it because it's like, man, you'd never know. And it's like maybe I'm soft, but like for me, I just can't like I would like a partner that's that's like you that understands like look, my partner doesn't mean any like any harm. They just right. they're just saying the facts, but I can't bring myself to test that. 
Like, it's great yeah. that you're, like, so mature and you're so, like, you know, like, out there and you know, you're great. I'm not testing it. Like, I just can't bring <laughs> myself to because I don't ever want to be the source of, like, insecurity for my partner. I feel like insecurity yeah. is, a, is, a, is a natural part of life that I never want to demonize or, like, or I don't, I don't think you're demonizing, but I never want to, like, I never want to attach anything too negative to it unless you're, like, you can't control it. Like, if you're, like, you know, I know you, like, da-da-da-da-da, it's, like, well, damn, I ain't even said no. Like, yeah, I haven't yeah, even yeah, said yeah, anything, yeah, yeah. and you're, like, a full-on, like, assault. Like, we, we ride at dawn. Like, like <laughs> let me, like, give me a minute to, like, you know what I'm saying? You don't but, want it weaponized. Yeah, I never want to weaponize that against Same. my partner. I, and I don't want, like my partner to weaponize like they know i'm into something like a certain trait or something but i haven't like mentioned it or anything mm -hmm. and they're like but i know it's like i'm with you aren't i like the fuck <laughs> like yeah, well, if yeah, i'm with yeah. you then obviously like but yeah i just i can't bring myself to like do it because i just feel like insecurity is one of those like uh it's one of those like innocent things and i also know that women have oftentimes like like you've heard of those girls like starving themselves because they feel like they're too thick or they're too fat sure. and i'm like i never want like to be the reason why somebody's second guessing their like existence on a day-to-day -day sure. basis but i think so, that's really lovely of you i think that's a really good i mean are you trying to flirt with my audience right now ladies he's single yo, like... i mean look <laughs> i just i just feel like but i think it's also like a masculine trait to like be like i don't want to use the word caring but um protective to be like um you can say protective, but also just like a. There's like a masculine aspect of caretaking, like when you're kind of like in a group and there's that one person that everyone can kind of like. He's understanding of everyone's concerns, issues, yeah. like never really invalidating how people feel. Like mm -hmm. I feel like that's a really important masculine trait to be able to walk in the room and say, okay, like this person's really sensitive about this. This person really doesn't like that. How can I reasonably entertain and empathize with yeah. everybody's hangups without enabling it too much where it's like okay bro like toughen up but yeah. also not invalidating it to the point where they're drowning in their um in their Neurosis, insecurities like and in stuff like that yeah. okay yeah but you're a unique case no, no no okay for the record i grew up with a middle eastern mother and she will never give you an eating disorder faster than like with her love and then two <laughs> not that i've ever had one but that's like the joke of middle eastern family shout out like they okay. are so critical of you my cousin comes up to me the other day This when I was in America. And she goes, um, my daughter's mad at me because I told her she's getting fat, but look at her. And I was like, actually, bro, she's just like kind of big bones. Like, that's a real thing. And like, she got that body type. She's going to the yeah. gym every day. She's skinny. She's just got that wide shoulder set, bro. And she goes, no, I'm trying to help her. She's fat. I was like, you're going to give your daughter an eating disorder, bro. And like, we're talking yeah. about it. But like, I don't, I think that sometimes people don't know the difference between like telling the truth and telling what they think is the truth. So like, you know what I mean? Like in weaponizing insecurity. So like, okay, let me, let me make sure this is really clear too. Since my partner and I don't, okay. We like literally on new year's, I looked at him. I was like, can we consent to getting five to 10 pounds heavier? And he was like, what are we doing? And I was like, we're going to eat all of the food this new year's. And he was like, I consent to this. And like, we sat there and okay. we just enjoyed new year's bro. And we did, we absolutely put on weight and then we both were working on losing it. But it was one of those things where, like, we want to be fat and happy sometimes. Fat, happy, and mid, guys. That's the audience right here, baby. That's our new mantra. Fat, happy, and mid. That's us. And I'd rather be Let fat. Let me go hit the hang up button real quick. No, 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 girl. <laughs> you, I'd rather be fat, happy, and mid than miserable trying to, like, meet some standard I was never going to meet. Okay? So I want to say the reason I can be this person now is because I spend my whole life, like, working on those insecurities. There were times, Rashad, listen to me. Not only did I hate my curly hair, I got in a fight with my mom and like when I was like in middle school because she wouldn't let me chemically straighten my hair. I was like, are you trying to freaking make me ugly on purpose? I got in so many fights with my mom over my nose. I was like, I want a nose job. Everyone's getting a nose job. I want one. And then I went in for a consultation and I was like, never mind. I'm probably going to look ugly or my nose is too big. They're not even going to do a good job. I'm not getting it. And then now I've spent all these years like learning to love my face and then realizing like, Oh my God, who fucking cares, bro? And now I just hope I can breathe. That's mm -hmm. all I want to fix is this deviated septum. Everything else, who fucking cares, bro? But right. I had to go through the motions. All of us have to go through the motions of fighting our insecurities, figuring it out. The other day on Instagram, I'll tell you truth, I photoshopped my photos. But this last photo, you guys can go zoom in on my butt. 
I left my cellulite and I left my scarring in there because I was like, fuck it, it kind of looks cool. But I know for a fact, some of y'all ha- like take that shit away. And I actually think sometimes it just kind of looks like lightning on Harry Potter like scars. And sometimes I want to show it off. But I know people, I had a partner once who went, oh, were you fat at some point? Because you've got like, you know, those cellulite lines that show up in your body and they kind of look like lightning strikes. Okay. I was like, no, I've never been fatter than this. He's like, but you've got them all over your body. And I was like, oh, yeah, it kind of look cool though, right? And he was just like, I guess. And I'm sitting here having a completely different relationship with something that he's seeing as a negative. And I'm realizing, oh, society has a negative relationship with this shit. And then I'm like, should yeah. I have a negative relationship with it? And I started to doubt myself. Like, oh, am I supposed to think this is ugly? And then I started thinking like, oh, I don't like this. I was so afraid of my body at some point. I wouldn't even go to the beach without shorts and a t-shirt on. And now I am naked on the internet and at public parades. You're all welcome. Okay. This is a lot of fighting your insecurities because you don't even know if you're insecure about it or if the world has told you you should be. And mostly, it's the world. Mm -hmm. I don't even think we care. I think we think we care because of how it looks. Mm. I've had this pimple on my face for like a week and my husband's like, damn, it really doesn't want to go away. I was like, it fucking hates me, bro. It's just living there. And I'm sitting there like, well, who's going to care? And he was like, yeah, for sure. Like, who's going to, who in your audience is going to care? Nobody. But I know for a fact, 10 years ago, Brittany would have been so nervous about a pimple on her face. Maybe even would have not streamed for the week because of it. Can you imagine cock blocking your bag so hard because of a pimple? I've been there. Yeah, I'm, 20, I'm 23. I can very much. I can I've imagine been there. that. I skipped school for yeah. a week because I had four huge whiteheads all like this on my nose. And a boy who sat in front of me in class was there. Richard, shout out. And I was so in love with him. And I was like, oh, no, he cannot see my face. My mom let me stay home a whole week from school over a pimple. Shout out, mom. Mm. Shout out, mom. I'm just saying, mm. like, I get it. But also, things change. If I mean, I can relate. To. I have like a, I have like a, like a stretch mark that goes across my shoulder. It looks like a, like a, like a bear or something like attack me or some shit. So it's bear like a really chat, like guys, aesthetic. Bear in the chat. It's oh, get these bears out this chat, <laughs> oh, bro. So chat. it looks like this, like a scar with a, because my shoulders from a young age were always abnormally like wide, and then when puberty set in, they went all the way out, and then like mm-hmm. the skin couldn't keep up, so it just started to like stretch. Mm-hmm. But. I think, um, well, for one, like, I don't, I don't understand dudes that have an issue with stretch marks or cellulite. It's like, I don't know, like, dudes expect women to look prepubescent. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. What the fuck yeah, is yeah. going on? But I just can't bring myself to, like, I don't know what it is. Like, I think it's also, like, benevolent sexism. It's also where it's like, man, like, I know women take this stuff a lot harder than men do. I'm not going to bring this up. And it's also the aspect that it doesn't even, like, a lot of this shit doesn't even bother me. It's like, oh, no, you have curly, like, hair, like, it doesn't bother me, stretch marks, that's natural. Oh, my God. The way I, like, can't handle people being insecure about their natural hair when I'm like, why? Who has taught you this? But then you know it's been taught Mm -hmm. to them. You know it's been ingrained in people. And I think I get frustrated for them because I'm like, bro, like, it's, it's so interesting the way you can, like, love people before they can love themselves or they can love themselves before other people can love you. It's just like, what journey are you on? Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but go ahead. No, it's fine. Of course, you can always. <laughs> so I was um, I was thinking about what you said in the sense of like um, how you and your partner are like so like straightforward and blunt about like, um, oh, th- th- this person's hot or that person's hot. I don't, I just, I don't know, man. I feel like, I feel like this is like uh hollowed ground with women like Mm -hmm. like this is like one of those things where it's like you you can't like i would never do it but like i understand that like oftentimes if you give like if you compare especially if it's an uh if it's a a mutable trait or is it immutable Mm -hmm. immutable Mm -hmm. is it immutable is the ones you can't change yeah Mm -hmm. so if it's like um or it can be mutable but it's mutable to the detriment of the person so like for example Mm -hmm. it could be like a woman with like curly hair Let's say she straightens it because the person she's with like straight hair. That's not her actual hair texture. Yeah. And it just makes her hair, her day and her week more stressful trying to like change herself to acclimate to what you want. To me, like maybe I'm just too soft, maybe. But I do feel like um, I feel like there's certain insecurities that I'm like, this is this is safe. Like this is OK. Like if you if you're insecure about like your lack of this or your lack of that. I completely surrender, like, any comparisons. Like, I won't bring it up. And there's also, like, the aspect of, like, um, 
going to the bar, going to the club, or how you dress. For me, like, I just can't bring myself to hold my partner to a certain standard. And then be like out like how the red pill guys are like, sure. yeah, like I fuck 20 bitches, but she better be at the at the crib cooking up like whatever the case might be. I personally just if I actually like not even if even if I don't even if I'm not in love with that character with that person, I can't bring myself to like do that. So I don't know what it is, but like I am toxic in that sense of like don't wear that or like don't go there or like don't do that, don't like that, or like don't say that. But I'll very much hold myself to that same standard. Mm. Does that make it better? Or does that hold you up? Know? Why is it toxic necessarily? Because one, I hear you being considerate. Two, I hear you being fair. Three, it's like, is it the place it's coming from that's toxic? Or well, I feel like it's the it's like the temperature of society. It's like it's like if you because like okay, if you tell the average chick, I don't like my girl leaving the crib at like nine p.m. to go to the bar. That never sounds <laughs> like you could say like, oh, I would never go to the bar either. I'm a good. No one's hearing that part of it. Mm -hmm. All they hear is the first thing you said, which is my girl can't go X, Y, Z place. Mm -hmm. So I acknowledge the fact that to a lot of people, that's like toxic. Like, oh, you don't you got a problem with your girl going to the bar at nine with her homegirls. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I understand that once I say yes nuclear bomb genocide like no one cares about anything else i have to say after that like so i understand that it's kind of toxic in a temperature sense well it depends like who again it goes back to like who are we talking to right because in the bubble i was raised in anyone who did leave the house past 10 p.m was a red flag outside of your 20s because it's like hey mm -hmm. like why are you leaving the house past 10 p.m why are you really even past, past eight hmm Mm -hmm. I'd say even in your twenties though, because it's oh. like I think I think in your twenties you're you're mature enough to to like tell your partner like, hey, this is a serious relationship. I oh, see sure, sure, sure. If you're, I'm sorry, yeah. I was thinking single and then partnered, but yeah, yeah, yeah. In your mm -hmm. in your partnership as well, I feel like again it goes down to lifestyle. Mm -hmm. When you're on a date, in the sense of like, okay, like I feel like if you're on a date, one of the greatest questions you can ask someone is like, what are you doing on a Friday night at eight p.m. Because, like, that's going to be mm. different for a lot of people. Now, some people might front and be like, oh, yeah, I'm, like, out with the girls. Or, like, I'm pretending I'm more social than I am. But if people were honest, they're like, honestly, bro, I'm just, like, wearing PJs and watching fucking episode 822 for One Piece. Like, is that right. cool? But then for some people don't think that's cool. So they front and they pretend, like, oh, I'm out. I'm social. Like, everyone's always lying. Because they want to mm. look good to their partners. And I'm saying, what if you told the truth and got a partner? <laughs> And it's interesting that some women think that like being out and about is like attractive because like I will I will not lie that's an automatic skip <laughs> like when I'm on IG and I see her out with the girls at the bar skip I don't I, I I don't know I just it's like it's not a it's not I don't look at it as like a bad thing it just shows like okay look you're probably not gonna take this as seriously as I am once we're together skip I just it's my thing is like. It's not the action in and of itself that's wrong. It's just right. it's incongruent with a serious relationship. Like, bro, I can't be like at the crib uploading the one millionth video, nine p.m., losing my mind. You know, one millionth death threat of the night. You know what I'm saying? And then you're out at the bar with the homegirls, like doing God knows what. And as someone who's been to the bar and if I've seen what goes on with like I've seen engaged people and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know I've seen stuff happen. It's like. Uh, I just can't be cool with that, even if people say it's insecurity. I just can't surrender this one. It's like I will die on this hill. Look, it sounds like, okay, because again, when I say like, oh, I wouldn't date a girl who wore pounds of makeup, it sounds like I'm saying I think less of women who wear pounds of makeup, but that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying I, Brittany, just realistically am not going to match or give that person what they need in a relationship because this isn't the kind of person in terms of categories that's going to be symbiotic. And I want it to work really well. I want it to be like a well-oiled machine. I want the only bump mm. in this marriage to be the things that happen outside of this marriage. Marriage isn't hard. Life is hard. Okay. okay. I want my marriage to be easy. Like my parents say their marriage is easy. And I've seen it in front of me easy my whole life. The only thing that was hard about my parents' marriage was the life itself, not the marriage. And that's what I okay. want. That's what I am working for. That's what my partner and I are aiming for every day. So for us, that means radical honesty. And for us, that means like having similar lifestyles. So even like um, his parents came over and they were like, hey, are you like keeping Brittany in this house? Like, doesn't she want to see Croatia? And I was like, oh, 
I'm keeping him in the house right now, but also I'm keeping <laughs> we're keeping each other in the house because we're both like this okay. person. Like he is like his friends will go out on occasion, but his friends are also introverted Croatians. So mm. his friend group, that's so nice. They came to our wedding. It was so lovely. They also only want to see him every three or four months. Once a night, like for one bar night, that's it. And they go out to the bar mm. and he sends me like little messages and I'm like, have fun. But their bars are literally like cafes with alcohol. So it's not like a, it, they don't go this, they don't do this, the clubbing. They're, they're nerds just who just want to talk about anime. Yeah. Like they're nerds. They're all nerds. I love them all. So mm. they're the sweetest group of boys, but like, I don't have to go with him. It's not a girl's night. Like I'm good. You know, maybe if they brought their girlfriends, I'd show up, but like, it's chilling. Okay. They go out. They go out every three to four months, maybe. Like, that's just the kind of person I married. I married the kind of person who doesn't go out. Hmm. His friends are people who don't go out. I do not go out anymore. So when I say, like, we were preparing to be each other's spouses, that wasn't our 20s. In our 20s, we were both going out. He was going out. Hmm. I was going out. In our 20s, we were never home. We had to grow up to be people in our older age that was ready to be people who didn't go out. Mm. And I don't I'm know. I'm to put that on pause for someone. Yeah. I'll put that on pause for someone, but continue your thought. So it's not even the age. It's just the time and era you are in your life. It's like, oh, I've reached the next era of my life. In this part of my life, I'm going to do this. Okay. My parents, when I when I came into their life, when they had me, were living in a beach on Seal Beach, going to the beach every day, hanging out in the water, great life. And then my parents were like, okay, let's do it. Went to the suburb, changed their lifestyle. My dad was in a band. In an Iraqi Middle Eastern band. Played at weddings. Drove a motorcycle. They settled okay. their life. The moment they were like, okay, we're going to have kids. We're going to be like suburb people. Moved to the suburb, mm. changed their life, focused on their career. My mom became a stay-at-home mom. That was it. Changed their whole life. And that's what I'm saying. Like, mm. you come into your life young and vibrant, partying, enjoying life. And then one day you're like, I'm ready to be a parent. I'm ready to be an adult. I'm ready to change my life. And if mm. you're dating someone already, you better hope they change with you. It's interesting because, like, sometimes I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm ready to meet that one and, like, settle down and stuff like that. But then, like, it's that comparison thing where you start looking at, like, what life could be from someone else's perspective. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'm like, man, like, if this whole Rashad Crenshaw thing works out, I don't know why I said it as, oh, I'm not me, but whatever. <laughs> um, if it all works out, I don't know if I want to, like, like, I might want to drag this out for as long as humanly possible. Sure. I'm kind of like, I definitely wonder like what's more, how do I put this in a way that makes sense? Um, how do you figure out, how would you go about, how would you go about figuring out which one is stronger or like which desire is like more like rooted? I would say life is like, life is little moments of time and okay. moments can last five minutes to a lifetime. Mm -hmm. You pursue the one that gets you closer to your joy and keeps you on that track. And whatever mm -hmm. you're doing in that moment, as long as it's joyful, it's the right decision. Not happy. Okay. Happy is an emotion that comes and goes. I mean, like deep seated okay. joy, which by the way, takes time to figure that out. So that's a journey. But you're following your joy. You're saying, ooh, like, you know, if I do this, I'm going to hate myself tomorrow morning. We're not doing that. We're doing the thing that doesn't make me hate myself tomorrow morning. Okay. Okay. So I know if I take four shots of tequila, I'm going to hate myself tomorrow. Brittany no longer does show f does shots of tequila. She'll do a different alcohol, but no more tequila. I always hate myself the next day. Always. Okay? So I learned that lesson, right? Mm. You do the thing that is going to lead you to your joy. And then when the right moment is happening or about to happen, you'll naturally pick it. And it will naturally be the right choice. So even if you pursue and you say, I'm going to want this life to last as long as possible, it's going to last as long as it needs to. Mm, okay. Yeah, that's that's actually a really, really good... Um, the tequila thing made a lot of sense. Girl. That made a lot of sense. I haven't drank in forever, but nah, that still made a lot of sense to me. Um, I'm still, like, you know, I'm still, like, figuring shit out and figuring out, like, how to 
how to properly like uh that's part of the reason why i watch a lot of your content is because i'm like okay like philosophically speaking like where the fuck am i going like what it like what's the what's uh like uh what what path is next that's why the video that you the self-help guru that video actually was like pointing to me because i'm like okay i kind of vibe and jive with this whole like toughen up fuck the experts, you know, fuck what the doctors say, and all these people that have spent decades, you know, like, you know, hyper-masculine, tough guy, sure. you know, all this bullshit. But at the same time, there was that part of the video where it's like, okay, like, how do I make sure I'm not, like, destroying, like, the substance of me or, like, who I actually am at my core in this desire to, like, become the ultimate, like, I don't know, like, Chad Alpha? For sure. So, For sure. my, my thing is, like, what do you think about the concept of um kind of like there's a the, the philosophical aspect i was kind of like battling with and that aspect was like okay what's wrong with kind of losing the old you mm. like it doesn't have to be like a mental illness it doesn't have to be like um something like radically toxic but like what's wrong with kind of like saying hey like that that version of me is kind of over with or that's kind of done or like i'm not really into that anymore because like when i was younger i was a lot less sociable i was a lot less um liked i mm -hmm. was a lot less um concerned about where i was fitting in and stuff like that and part of me sometimes wonders like okay like am i being fake or am i because i know i'm not like, I know this is just a part of growing. Like, yeah. you're not going to be antisocial forever. Like, eventually, you're probably going to want to make friends. You're not going to be on the game forever. Eventually, you're going to want to go do some other shit. Is it necessarily wrong to try to seek a, a death of self and kind of, like, become something else? Or, like, add in new pieces to make a, a, a picture whole? Like, how would you say that the right way to do that is? Well, first and foremost, we, I do think there's always a fundamental core of all of us, but I think you will shed the top layer of yourself continuously. You will, like, I can't wait to meet Brittany at 40, 42, 42 specifically. I think she's going to be so cool. I don't know her yet. I and mean, I'm not her yet. Like, there's no way I'm going to be this girl at 42. I'm still going to be Brittany, but I'm not going to be this Brittany. And I okay. cannot wait to meet her. Have you ever seen Fat Jordan Peterson? fat no go back and watch his lectures on youtube that man used to be fat okay fat okay. jordan peterson is not the jordan peterson we have now and he's okay. 60 you are always shedding layers of yourself you are always transforming you are always becoming someone new my dad at 30 was not my dad at 40 was not my dad at 50 was not my dad at 60 and i saw all of them girl I witnessed my parents being my age and raising me, you know, my earliest memory is like three years old because my family, they forgot me at Big Bear Mountain in California. It's a, it's a ski like mountain. And I got, they forgot me. They lost a kid, me, they lost <laughs> me. And an adult picked mm. me up. A stranger picked me up. And I was like, man, I was about to be trafficked, but like, okay. Like they lost me. And I sat they there. They returned to you, right? Bro, let me tell you the fear on my mother's <laughs> face when she finally realized I was okay. I had never been squeezed so hard in my life. But I will tell you, like, I have a vivid memory of watching my parents grow up. And I have to realize, like, they are th they are us. We are them. Like, mm. we're all just people on a journey. And I just happen to be a part of that story. But, like, you will be a version of yourself, like a changed version of yourself when you need to be. Because you have to be ready for it. When you can't force it, it's like perfect cell form. You know, you want to be perfect cell. You got to go through the journey, bro. You got to eat them androids. You know, you okay. got to figure it out. You got to go on the journey. I just don't think life is um, complicated or simple. I think it's just simply complicated. It's a lot of patience and a lot of waiting. I think the right time to change is when you need to. Mm. And I think the wrong time to change is when you feel like you have to force it. But that's not okay. the same it's getting up and doing it when you don't want to. Getting up and doing okay. it when you don't want to is because you need to do it even though you don't think you have the strength. You have it, girl. Stand up and do it. Like you have it, but you have it because like that's your moment to like be that masculine self. 
you know, that Alex Homerosi guy, the guy I quoted in the self-help thing where he was like, fuck the data. That guy mm-hmm. has a quote that I really should have put in that video where he said, you know, the slaves. And I'm like, OK, we'll see where this is going. He's like, <laughs> where is this gonna go? he's like the slaves. He's like, I think about how they had to work every day, every hour, day in and day out. And if they can do it, I can do it. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yo, <laughs> no. <laughs> I That's mean, right. I, I, bro. Okay, look, this man is worth like a hundred million dollars. Do you want to be worth a hundred million dollars and say shit like that out loud? Because I don't want to be, girl. No one gonna quote me saying, you know, what the slaves they worked. <laughs> so again, is... he might say fuck the data, but I say, man, fuck your mom, because like that shit's stupid, and I don't want to. I just shit's stupid, bro. No, thank you. I'd rather be. Say it with me, kids mid fat and happy okay <laughs> i'm not gonna lie that those three words terrify me to death tell that's me that's like it. mid number one that means my, my life is over fat that means my life is over happy okay but in conjunction with the other two that must mean like that must mean like like the ultimate beta like you know that thing from spider-man 3 the venom thing the ultimate like black yeah. beta death creature has crawled into my ear and taken over and destroyed like if i'm fat mid and happy something has gone horribly wrong now in your case that's different but like over here like as a like a 23 year old guy still trying to figure it all out man i can't think of like a decade maybe like my 50s when it's all said and done or some shit but like now i agree agree. that would terrify me yeah that would but you're you're like you're kind of, you seem more content with that happening sooner than later. Me, like, I'm really, like, uh, because I just feel like, I just feel like it'd be impossible to, like, to be, to have that third thing, to be happy if I was mid and fat. Because I feel like people would treat you differently, it'd be harder to get, like, into relationships. Um, I don't know, man. Yeah. Go into mid, fat, and happy a little bit more so I can understand the philosophy of it. I think, I think it's, um... Uh... I think mid, fat, and happy is not a young person's game. Okay. That explains my... I think when you're young, that. like, you better fucking move, bitch. Like, you better hustle. Right. You better do that shit because, like, you're not going to have your energy in your 30s. In your 30s, you're going to be humbled. You're going to wake up and be like, holy fuck, without cocaine, I can't do anything. And, like, you can't be doing coke. It fucks up the cartilage in your nose, let me tell you. So, like, not that I know from firsthand experience. I got a brother. And so, like, let me tell you, okay, there's something about that that I think is so real. Like, my audience is my age and older and sometimes in their 20s. But mostly, like, there are people who are ready to be mid-fat and happy. Okay. Because they've spent a lot of time stressing, a lot of time hustling, a lot of time, like, I think we're ready at some stage in our life. But, man, I couldn't even tell you, Rashad, how much energy I had in my 20s. I I do miss that, like, feeling of having it because I don't have it anymore. But I think you should use it. And I think you should use it to the best of your ability. And then I think you you go through these curves. Like, I can't wait till, like, set 40. I think I'm going to be so Mm -hmm. solidified in my career. I'm going to have, like, this house maybe, maybe. I'm going to have this whole life that's going to be very different. And then in my 50s and 60s, I'm going to be a different version. And then in my 80s, I hope I'm a fat, happy grandma who fucking has fresh bread for the neighborhood kids, bro. Not literally a grandma, but, you know, like an old lady who's got big sagging tits like my Nana did growing (laughs) up. And, like, she always had fucking food and she was always sweating because she was always in the kitchen cooking. She And when she would hug you, she would just smother you. And you're like, oh, my God. And, like, I want to be so fucking unworried about my skin and my hair and my job. I just want to be able to make bread for the neighborhood kids before they go to school in the morning. That's actually – like, I can't even argue with that. I can't even, like, that actually – there's nothing anybody can even say. Like, that actually makes total sense. I mean, honestly, this is going to sound crazy, but I actually don't plan on being around for, like, 80. Like, wh- like yo, I got to be out of here by 80. Why? What? I'm just taking up space. <laughs> I'm just breathing oxygen and shit. A- Somebody else could use it. <laughs> I plan to be an active old person. Are you going to be a non-active old person? The grave is pretty non-active, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. You think so- if you die before 80, you think you're going to be a statistic? 
Maybe. I mean, I just can't see. What would I be even up to at 80? Like, I have bad memory at 23, bro. My at grandpa, 80, like, what am I, My you grandpa, until he was 102, was an active deacon in his church and sang hymns for the church. Every week was there. Hmm. I don't know. I'm kind of... My only thing is, like, my memory is bad, okay? okay? At 23, my memory is bad. Sure. I don't want to even think. Like... You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to be Biden on steroids, okay? Like, I just, like, that's just not, you know what I mean? Like, well, on steroids might be the answer to me if I actually do end up losing my memory and stuff like that. Sure. I don't know, but 80-something? There is a novelty to it, though. There is, like, a respectable, like, there is something to it where it's like, yeah, like, to be, you know, old and, you know, wise and knowledgeable and to just contribute and contribute while you have your last few decades left. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, that makes total sense. I don't know. Maybe I'm just too like um, young. You're literally twenty-two. <laughs> You're imagining sixty years into the future. It's like so far from you right now. Yeah, it's far away. It, it is far away, and it's also just the aspect of like um, so much of like what I imagine around being me is centered around like the YouTube stuff and like sure. all the stuff that I want to get done. That like, like I I don't I haven't been able to view myself through the lens of like living a non like entertaining entertainment lifestyle mm. like to give you some context i've always said like i'm like an eyes on the horizon kind of person like when i was i think we met i think i mentioned this like the, at the end of our conversation last time i was like uh, you asked me uh what do i enjoy most about existing mm -hmm. i think i told you that i've never once actually like appreciated existing in the moment so like from like 12 was when i started thinking like okay like what am i gonna do with my life I was always thinking like, I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it, I'm going to be this, I'm going to be that. Um, at first I wanted to do music, but then like that, like I never stayed consistent with that. Um, but you know, people hit me with, you know, you should like, you should like report news, like you sound like you'd be good at it, you should do that shit. And eventually jokes on me, it happened, but I was always like thinking like when I was like 14, 15, 16. I'm not even paying attention to schoolwork. I'm daydreaming about being this like YouTuber doing this and doing that. I am in no way, shape, or form in the moment. Yeah. So I've never once actually like thought of myself as a normal person doing normal shit, living a wholesome life. I've always been like um like high on this, like not high, but like um obsessed with like I've gotta fucking get to this thing. Which was honestly like so dumb looking back, cause like I don't even feel like I was mentally present for like my teen years. I feel like I was like in this time machine trying to like press all the fucking buttons and make that shit go. Um, so yeah, can that I was ask, a ramble. Can I ask you a like? It's a very personal question, so you do not have to answer it. Okay. Can I ask you um how you lost your weight? Hmm. So like, I. Do not recommend this for the average person watching this. Disclaimer. Um, I What I did was I, I went on this thing called cal CalorieCalculator.com. It this literally is, like, is always up on my life. phone. I live on that. Yeah, one. this will save your life, okay? I went in there, and I was I always tell people, don't lie to the website, okay? It's just you and the computer. They're not gonna, it's not going to laugh at you, except maybe the FBI agent to the screen, but we'll forget <laughs> about that. Just type in the truth. When it asks you how fat you are, just tell the truth. When it asks you how active you are, tell the truth. I typed all that in, and the website was like, bro, like, if you want to lose two pounds a week, you're going to have to hunker down. So I was eating, like, not going to lie, like, a meal and a half a day, and I was running on the treadmill at, like, full, full speed for, like, 20 minutes, mm. and I was in the gym lifting weights for, like, two hours. Yeah. So, like, I was in there, like, mm. doing the fucking the most. The two pounds a week, that's extreme. Mine is 900 calories if I want to do that. Two pounds a week. Yeah, I went to sleep every night hungry. Yeah. Like, not, like, deathly hungry, but, yeah. like, I could, like, I learned to, um, this is going to sound psychotic. Like, if I didn't feel, like, a little bit of hunger, like, slight hunger pangs, I knew I ate too much. Like, mm. I, I knew, like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm fucking up. Like, okay. So whenever I would feel it, I'm like, I'm on track. Like, okay, like, if I'm going to sleep feeling like I've eaten too little, yeah. I'm losing weight. And sure yeah. enough, it, it, it fell off. So I appreciate that honesty because I know that's difficult because I do. I have my numbers up all the time and I look at them. And I think it's really interesting because there's a lot of conversation about, like, I don't, I don't feel like I have a problem with food. I feel like I have 
uh, a deep desire to comfort myself with food, which is different, but also like I just mm. love to cook Same. and like, girl, I can eat. Let me tell you. So actually one of the ways that I've like made sure, cause I don't want to run into like an eating disorder situation. So one of the things that we've been doing as like a couple, and I don't know when this started, but it was really natural is like, we don't eat till four. 4 p.m. AM or PM? PM, PM, PM. PM? Okay. Because we wake up late because I sleep. So I don't eat till 4 p.m. And when I eat, I eat like the biggest meal that I'm going to eat, mm. like most of my calories. And then I have one snack basically after stream. And that's what I do. And like I've been eating so good though. I've been eating like potatoes because, you know, like more food than calories type thing. And then like we have the thing in Croatia called chivapi. And I've been just making them okay. into patties and like so basically like a veal, like just pork beef. And like eating those and like I flavor it with so much hot sauce. Mm. So spicy. Anyways, it's fucking good. And then I get some arugula because I fucking love arugula, okay? And I just make this big okay. ass meal and I've just been eating it. And my husband and I, we're like, we literally like, like high five. We're like, damn, we're geniuses, bro. It's so good. But it's like a conversation of like, I will have a hunger pain around like 3 a.m. And I'm like, I just want to fucking eat. And I'm like, sit mm -hmm. down and go to bed watch your tiktoks and go to bed because i know for a fact you can't eat before bed right before their girl that's literally my crutch i always want to eat right before i fall asleep mm. i just like i always want to eat and i'm like i was doing that and i was gaining all this weight and i was like i can't do that so it's like weird to realize like without starving yourself without technically having an eating disorder you're just not giving into that craving of eating right before bed because that's my comfort like i love to feel full before bed which is mm. literally the worst thing to do. They always say, like, don't eat the first two hours before bed. Girl, you can't help it. I love eating before no, bed. No, I get it. <laughs> I get it. I mean, my thing was, like, if I don't feel hungry before I'm going to bed, I have fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, I've had people ask me that question. I'm like, how did you lose weight? Because, like, I'm always, like, I wonder when, like, like are they asking me for Ozempic or some <laughs> shit? Like, are they, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you know, I don't yeah. have it. You know, I don't have the stash. But, um. Yeah, I mean, like, I was just, honestly, it was the red pill content that really, like, shook me into, into like, getting my shit together. I just mm. was watching, like, mad red pill content. I was like, okay, I'm yeah. fat in 21. If I keep this shit up forever, I'm fucked. To be real, like, I, even today, I worked out, and I was, like, lifting weights in the window, and I was, like, seeing the weight. And, like, the window, my window makes me feel so good about myself because it has just enough shadow to make you think you have abs. And it's, like, really nice. And you're like, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, oh, this is like, this is literally that home, that gym lighting versus home lighting. And I'm like sitting there and I'm like, I'm working out and I'm just sitting here like, I know you don't see the results as fast as you want. But just remember, like, it's never like that anyways. Like, it's never mm -hmm. as fast as you want. And I have to tell myself, like, do it anyways. And you'll look like lean beef patty. You'll have abs. You maybe will. Or, like, maybe you won't. Like, but I was like, you want thick thighs? Like, they save lives. Let's go. Like, I'm always just sitting here like, let's go. And so, like, I'm always like, I have to tell myself, like, it's, but I'm so impatient. Oh, my God, Rashad. I'm just, like, the most impatient bitch ever. And I'm like, why don't I have, like, I'm literally that dumbass who's like, no, <laughs> like, why don't I have it after one pump? Wait, you're like, actually like that? <laughs> like, I literally, I, I will do crunches for 20 seconds and be like. <laughs> yeah, you're crazy. You're, I, I can't fault you for that, though, because my calves, I've been working on growing them a lot. Ooh, and that's nice. actually a muscle group. Yes, it is. That when you work them out they do look bigger for a yes, few days do. so if you're looking for your little fix Ooh, i can uh, I'm gonna start that, that will they will look good for a while um but i used Please. to be like that when i was like when i first started yeah i would like you know about 10 10 reps all right yep. where is the vein yeah, in my bicep is it there yet delusional literally. but it's like at some point you kind of realize i don't know when it was that i kind of realized it like i had to just like it was when I, I don't know, it was like when I stuck to it long enough and I started to see the change, I was like, okay, it's going to take a little bit, but not yes. that long. Like, not as long as you think. So, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't get into that Ozempic bag, but I've noticed, um, weirdly enough, a lot of people in my generation, I want to say like a lot of 04, 05 babies, a lot of like... PED use is rampant, bro. Like rampant in my in my generation, it's scary. I got lucky. I know people who the black Jeanette or whatever. It, it's probably true, but I got lucky in the sense that like 
even just on an individual level, my shoulders were always abnormally wide. My chest was always abnormally big for no reason. But like I go into the gym and I see these kids with like veins going all up and down. Like I can tell they're on PEDs and I'm like, you're you're destroying your estrogen, your test, your everything. What do you think? Do you think it's. Because we're seeing it mostly in young men, this like extreme amount of PED use. Have you thought about this? Do you know about this? What do you think about it? Do you know Sam Sulek? Sam Sulek? Is that his name? How do you say oh, Sam's yeah. name? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Sam Sulek or Sam, what? I'm not sure. Every time I see Sam, my heart breaks. Just like as an older sister, like energy. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, why, why are we doing this? Like, my heart breaks for him. And then there's like, I watch these streamer boys and like, I'll see them. I don't even know their names, but I'm like, oh my God. Like, the way these drugs impact their bodies. I'm like, for what? Okay, going back to that masculine discipline. I think the masculine discipline hopefully will encourage you to do things the right way. You would think that a mm. healthy masculine relationship with yourself will teach you to do things the right way. I am so concerned. Even Ozempic, the way I'm hearing it's impacting people, like it is so neg- – it's a diabetes drug. I didn't know that. It's for diabetes. I didn't know that. So people using it for weight loss is like, yes, but that's not even like what it's for. So like the problem is like now we're seeing all of these consequences and I'm like, bro, what pe- – I'm sorry. I'm going to say this out loud and forgive me. Shortcuts. You get what you like. You get what you put into it. If you're going to take shortcuts your whole life, you're going to get what you put into it. And hard work will always be better. Mm -hmm. Good, strong, smart, Mm -hmm. hard work will always be better. And I think that's my fear for a lot of these people like in this like gym bro bubble or like in the gym bubble is like, like they're always asking the girls too, like, are you on stuff? Are you on stuff? Are you taking natty or not? Da, 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 da. And some of these girls, I know they're lying. I know they're lying. Some of them bro. are on uh, Anavar. Some bro, of them are. On I Anavar. know that. And you know what's yeah. crazy is like, um, there will be like, a, there's a guy. I don't know what his name is, but he came out and he's like, okay, I'm gonna tell you right now. I've worked with so many guys. They're all on drugs. And those guys that tell you they have fit bodies year round, they pre take all their photos. They totally drop off and then they come back. They're not even real. And I was like, I have to remember that too because I look at gym people and I think, oh, I'm like, I'm not. Uh, why aren't I there yet or what's happening? And I have to remember yeah. like, oh, fuck. Like, okay. Because I yeah. thought, you know what I mean? Even I fall into it. Mm-hmm. Where I'm like, okay. okay. That was a big part of like me not going too far was realizing, oh, I'm not slacking. I'm just not on drugs. Bro. That was the moment where I was like, oh, okay. There's also the appeal of like um that hyper masculinity of like doing anything it takes to get there, even yes. taking like PEDs. The ends, did, and what does it justify the means? Right, and it's almost worse than lying about it, because then the younger guys are like, "Oh, you're honest, you don't give a fuck, or you're just a bad motherfucker. You're on gear, you don't care, you'll tell everybody, you don't give a fuck." It's even more appealing than it was last time, because yep. then it's like it's like this symbol of like being a bad motherfucker. Um, for me, in my case, I always hate saying it because it sounds so cringy, but like I got lucky in the sense of just like. I just got lucky. Like I didn't, I only worked out for two years and had like an abnormally big physique. Yeah. But I see guys who like, they'll, they'll come to me and they'll be like, I've only been working out for like two months and look at me. And they're as big as me. And I'm like, dude, you're telling me you're on drugs that I'm like, you think I don't know, but like, you're telling me you're on drugs and they're younger than me. And I'm like, where is this coming from? Like, is it social media? Like, I guess it is. I guess people want to look like their favorite influencers, which I mean, like, I don't know why I'm saying it. Like, it's like a weird thing. What they want the dream the... without earning the dream. But it's even the thing is like it's just that a dream. You're never gonna be ten percent body. Like I had yeah. a guy like like uh, you should go down to ten percent body fat. I'm like, and he was no, he said uh three percent. I'm like and die <laughs> and die. Is that what you want me to be a corpse? Like you want me to no, die? Man. He's like no, man, just three percent body fat. No, that's called death. That's mm-hmm. called literally death. I, it's like it's not even a a goal it's a fantasy where it's like you do have to kind of at some point come to terms with the fact that okay you being this lean you're around with your johnson working and you not feeling like you're going to die every day is impossible without taking these drugs do you understand that Mm -hmm. and i think a lot of um it seems like more and more people especially like people a little bit i don't see as many people born in my year like oh one oh two but like a lot of oh four oh five babies like 17 year old dudes coming in the gym sarms up yeah i'm like 
I'm trying to understand, and I don't know. Maybe if this is if this is a little too bit too far out of the wheelhouse, you can tell me. But um, I don't know. Like, what do you think is the philosophical like self exploration that it takes to like distance yourself from that? So this goes back to fat, happy, and mid. Oh shit! <laughs> Yo. <laughs> okay, fat, happy, and mid. Right, because fat, happy, and mid. Is about letting go of the attachment of being something mm. that isn't worth the sacrifice and being grateful for what you have, which is peace. When you're fat, mm, happy, okay. and mid, and again, not fat, happy, and miserable, not obese, risking fucking like heart attacks at 45, not mid, meaning like can't get up or do anything. You, I mean, fat, happy, and mid, meaning like this is a pretty good life. And you know what? I did okay. Mm. And you know what? I am in good enough shape. And I am good enough when it comes to my job. And honestly, like, my family's happy. I'm happy. Like, I did it. I am fat, happy, and mid. It's meant to represent the idea of letting go of this, like, fantasy of attaining something that was never for you. Attaining something you thought would bring you happiness and it didn't. Striving mm. for something that's going to kill you before you can enjoy it. And it's like, okay, what is this? Like, what is this thing that we're doing? Now, again, I don't want people to think like, oh, fat, happy, and mid means like I've given up on my dreams. It means accepting the ones okay. that were actually meant for you. Mm, okay. And I think that will bring people more peace than struggling to be someone they were never even meant to be or wanted to be. Not that I believe in like destiny, like this idea of determined, like it's determined for you. But I do think like what will be will be. And I do think like as long as you put in the effort, the like karma really does mean not you do good, you get good. It means what you put into your life is reflected back in your life. My mm -hmm. life is a reflection of what I put into it. And I'm really happy with what I've put into my life. I wasn't mm -hmm. always that way. Right. And that was a reflection of what I put into it. So fat, happy and mid is like letting go of this attachment, right? Because again, I look at Sam and I look at these men and I'm like, stop it. Most women want a dad bod anyways or want a version of softness that says to them, I love you more than I love how I look. Even men, don't you want a woman who loves you more than how she looks in the superficial sense? I get what you mean. You know, not in the like literal sense, but in the superficial sense, like in the sense where she is literally going to plastic her surgery like herself up to death because she's so afraid of what she looks like. Same with men on these mm. roids and men who are shooting themselves up. Like, God bless you. But, like, how are you any different from the woman that gets 50 surgeries and then dies on the operating table? What are we doing this for? And I think mm. it's, like, an insecurity, but it's also, like, a meaning crisis, like, as Verveki would say. It's, like, an emptiness within them that they're trying to fill with, like, you know what I mean? With this aesthetic, which is – you're not an evil person. So when I say it's fine, I'm just saying you're furthest from joy. You're, you're moving away from your joy. And for what? You're not a bad person. You're just, you're making a choice. And there's another mm. one if you want it. Hmm. I'm not convinced people want interesting. it. Interesting. I just don't That's think. That's you always say that. You yeah. always say that. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like saying, it's like when Fresh, Fresh and Fit say, I'm sitting here telling you how to do it and most of you won't do it because you don't really want mm. it. I feel the same way about my work. And by the way, when I listen to Fresh and Fit say stuff like that, I'm like, they're right. They don't want it. They don't want it. Because people don't. They want to hear people talk about it so they can fantasize about doing it. And then actually watch Fresh and Fit do it so they never have to. Like living vicariously through the person? Bro, it's good enough. It's good enough mm. for most people. Maybe it's the, I think it's the exact same thing you said. Maybe that, maybe it's the same thing of like getting a bunch of surgeries, hopping on a bunch of gear because you're afraid to confront yourself. And it's maybe the exact same thing of doing nothing at all is coming from the same thing and being afraid to confront yourself. Because sure. I think that's what it was for me too, was I was afraid to, because it's, it's, it's easy to be like, oh my God, women ain't shit. Or these women, these women, these women, but it's a lot harder to be like, okay, why is Rashad not successful with women why why is it that I mean, when i wake up and look around everyone else is killing it but i'm not like what's going wrong yeah i think there was a lot of like um 
fear of self-confrontation. Yeah. But I'm also curious as to what separates those people from people who never get there. Um, you don't believe in self. You don't believe in predetermination, right? Do you believe yeah. in more? I believe like, like I already think I always tell my husband, I was like, man, we've had a really good life. And he's like, uh, it's not over. I was like, eh, we're already dead. As far as I'm concerned, like, I'm not worried about death because it's already happened. But I know because it's always going to happen. So I think, like, spiritually, I do kind of have this belief of, like, it's already happened, but it hasn't happened. So I don't think, like, it's not – it's whatever will be will be. But I don't know if it's determined so much as, like, it is what it was always going to be anyways. But I think you have, like, in your micro life, I think you have the ability to change your future. But in terms of, like, you don't mm. have the, you have the ability to foretell the future. I know what you're trying to say. You know what I'm like, saying? Are you like, saying like, like you have your factory settings, but then you have shit you can kind of like build onto it. You can make these like minute changes as time goes on, but exactly. you are who you are. You are who you are. And like, it is what it is. Like, I will always be the, like I said, my face, my body is as if my personality was manifested into this like form. I couldn't have looked different. Mm. Imagine I was like a 10 model with fucking like a million followers on IG and I was sitting here with you and I wouldn't be, ta I wouldn't be having the same conversation with you. Yeah, we wouldn't. Have, this yeah, wouldn't be, be my life, but my life is this because it's exactly what makes sense for this person that I was. This body mm -hmm. I was given and this life that I chose. Like, oh my god, okay. So you this think that's like a like a a combination of circumstance, or do you think it's like more so like maybe like a little bit of because like I was watching this Drake interview because mm. like I studied the the music industry to like figure out how to navigate like just entertainment in general. Yeah. And he uh he was like I'm being guided by something else above me. You know, you know the Illuminati people like it's the devil. I think he's trying to say like I think something up there is pushing my story mm. further and like interfering for me and like making mm. things work. When you say this body and this personality and this face and everything comes together to make like the right or at least like a combination that makes sense what do you mm. think that's coming from if i'm being really honest i think i take more of a biological uh conclusion which means like i imagine myself more like a creature on a planet and like i'm just a bear living my life and like i'm gonna mm. do what a bear does and like i'm a human and i'm gonna He's do what a, a human does you know what I, I know we love bears over here we're like obsessed bro <laughs> but like you know it's only because they all want to fight me and i just gotta mention it slow key so they can hear it you know um okay. <laughs> but I think like I am this like biological creature. I'm a combination of my genetics and my relationship to the environment. And so like we're mm -hmm. always like reacting to our environment and then having a relationship with it. And then it's, you know, I was, I couldn't have been someone different. You know what I mean? But I also mm. can add and, you know, like I can change my avatar if you want to go video games. Like I can change my character. It's like a game of rust. You show up naked with only like a stick. Like a fire stick, you know, if you've okay. ever played Rust. Okay. And then I sat there and I mm -hmm. started collecting tools to like, you know, make my life work for me. I just think that I don't believe in a God, but I do think okay. there's just like a, if there was a, like the thing I love about the concept of a God is that like, he knows the end and he knows the beginning. Okay. You know, he knows the things that are objective, even if we don't like it. I think that concept is something that I do believe in without there being a God, like, I think whether, or li whether I like it or not, there is an objective. I just don't think we have access to it because of our perception. I think there okay. is an ultimate objective, right? Whether we like it or not, like, life's going to be what it is. But in the meantime, on the micro, I can still decide what to eat for dinner. I can still decide who to marry. And I seem to have control mm. over a lot of little things in my life that make up a really big part of my life. You know, okay. and again, like you can look at it from a biological standpoint. I have fibromyalgia. When my doctor diagnosed me, he told me, hey, just a heads up. Either people give up on their whole life and just become like they just give up on everything or they work out every day and they figure it out. And I was like, OK, well, I can't give up on everything. I'm too busy. So right. I fit into that right. category. But that's I don't even know that I did that. I just know that I'm that person like Brittany doesn't just give mm. up. So, like, how much of that was biological and how much of that is me making that decision? Yes. Hmm. Okay. That's what I mean. I get, so, okay. some people say God is guiding me. I just say, like, I'm doing what I – what else could I do except be best? <laughs> what else can hmm. I do but be Brittany? Okay. That makes sense. That's what I mean. So, like, I don't believe in God like Drake. But also, who could have been Drake but Drake? Right. Who? I mean, it's the person that makes a star, not the star that makes the person. Yeah. Like, Cause like you, you can't, yeah. Andrew Tate's the only Andrew Tate. Yeah. He's the only one. 
There's no which is a good way of looking it. at it. Yeah. Because if you if you you got to have faith that you're enough to to fill that role because like you can't you can't ha- you don't want to like it's kind of it's it's kind of goes back to what we were talking about like five minutes ago where you're kind of looking at what everyone else is like mm. and feeling like you have to meet that not realizing that's that it's not the Instagram followers and stuff that makes the person. It's that individual who being themselves acquired all of that in the first place. I'll tell you this. If so. I gave someone else's Andrew, Andrew, if I gave Sneeko Andrew Tate's platform, <laughs> if I gave anyone else Andrew Tate's platform, there's a reason he's Tate and right. they're not. So having a dream of like, I want to be the next Andrew Tate. I was like, is Andrew Tate dead? Because <laughs> he's Andrew Tate. Got mags. So you right, know what I mean? Like everyone wants to be somebody but themselves. <clears throat> Where do you draw that line of like inspiration or deriving um, a sense of advice or direction? Because I look at a character like Sneeko and I feel like he took a little bit too much from like everyone. Mm-hmm. Once he started to really blow up, he took a little bit too much from Zarka, a little bit too much very from Very open-minded or Sneeko. <laughs> You know, a little bit too much from, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. i say that ironically, the one person he didn't listen to was Destiny. Um, it was interesting. Uh, where do you draw that line of, like, absorbing things from the people you look up to? Have you ever done it before? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. First of all, I'm a big proponent of mentors. I think they're great. Okay. I'm a big fan of mm. elderly. Like, I'm a big fan of my elders. I think, like, I seek wisdom from my elders all the time. I grew up in a culture that, like, really respected the patri- like the patriarch of the family and the matriarch. Okay. Like, you went to your grandma and grandpa for advice. Like, I really admired my grandparents. Like, God rest their soul. I, um, I really admire my parents. I go to my parents for advice all the time. Like, I, even though we differ religiously and all that stuff, like, I still trust them to know what they know. And they know a lot. Mm-hmm. They know a lot. They're just like little beacons of wisdom. And so um, even though I share all the funny stuff, guys, okay, all the funny stuff that doesn't seem very wise, they got a lot of wisdom. And I think that is the key is seeking the wisdom. And so um, I think when you lose yourself and wanting to be someone you're not, whether it's a mentor or a god or a belief system or an ideal, whatever, then you're mm-hmm. moving away from your joy once again. And you're not going to be happy. You have to figure out who you are. Introspection is about you. Who are you? Not who do you want them to be or who do they want you to be? Not who do you want to be for them? Who are you? And that's a much harder question to answer. So I I think like I'm a big fan of mentors. I'm not a big fan of copycats. Mm. I'm a big fan of individuality. I'm not a big fan of ego. Nobody gets anywhere alone and no one should sit around and wait for other people to do it first. And it's Where like, do you draw the line of ego? Well, your ego will draw the line for you and you'll hit the wall. And you <laughs> yeah, <succeed>. that's, yeah. <laughs> you know? that's very true. Your ego is that's your cock true. block. Your ego is the cock block. Pride and mm. ego, they're sisters and they're fucking. Okay? Mm. Like... And incest is not a wincest. Okay. So stop. Like, we're done. <laughs> I'm so funny, guys. I'm so funny. <laughs> that's, anyway. that's a way of putting it. Okay. Like, we're done. Incest is over. The Bible's done. We're over it. Okay. So I think that I have pride in my work. I think it's really good. The pride, mm. I try not to root it in my ego, but in the work I've created. Mm. I have an ego. It. It represents the id, me, Brittany. I know who my consciousness is. It will not be the reason I trick myself into thinking I'm better than I am. That's why mm-hmm. my husband has to be honest with me. Because everyone on this planet keeps telling me I'm either better or worse than I am. And I need somebody other than myself to tell me how it is. And I trust him to be very honest with me. Okay? Mm-hmm. Everyone else tells me, mm, oh, my gosh, you're doing great. Oh, my God, it's so perfect. I'm like, shh, you're, get out of here. You don't know what you're talking about. Next. Right. And then everyone's like, you're not shit. You haven't done anything. I was like, girl, I'll make more than you. Move over. And I was like, you, husband, <laughs> tell me what it okay. is. And he'll tell me what it is. And it is real. I can, I know it. And I can feel it. I'm like the dad and the evidence makes sense. You have both emotionally made me feel secure. And you've given me the evidence to know you're logical and not just saying it because you're fucking me. Mm, okay. It's like that because you know how your parents 
talk you up because you're their kid, but also tear yeah. you down because you're their kid. Yeah. Okay, my husband mm -hmm. neither has to talk me up because I'm his wife, nor tear me down because I'm making more money than him. Mm. We do not do that. We only, like, we're like, uh, what is this? Like when you're, well, military, like when you're going up the wall and you reach down to help your comrade up, we're doing that. If I'm further, I pull him. If I, he's further, he pulls me. And we are on the same page. Yeah. We are the only people keeping each other. So, again, like ego and pride, if he had ego and pride, he would have been upset that I made mo more money than him. Mm. If I had ego and pride, I would have discontinued wanting to be with him because he didn't make more money than me. Mm, okay. Because when I go back into my bubble where I grew up, the question is, when are you going to quit your job to be a wife? And my question back is... Who said that was the plan? Because I don't belong to this bubble. So I understand the plan for you guys, and I love that for you, but, like, it's not my plan. So hmm. ego is great and pride is great, unless it's toxic. And you'll know it is because your life will reflect it. Just a reminder, <laughs> RIP to Cam Kevin Samuels, but he didn't die with a wife in his arms. He didn't die, die surrounded by family. And I think that sticks out to me. I want to die knowing that I... One had no regrets, and two, somebody loved me deeply. If it wasn't just myself, the people around me. And sometimes I think mm. about him dying, and I'm like, he died in a hotel room with a lady, right? That's very nice. But also, I wonder if that's the way he would have wanted to die. Mm. And I don't know. I don't know him. But I, I hope mean, he didn't have any regrets in that moment, you know? Yeah, that's a that's a good point about trying to figure out what your end like destination is. Like, I know for the next ten to fifteen years, I want to be like Rashad Crenshaw. That's like the, that's the ideal for the next ten to fifteen years. But I do know for a fact that there has to be like, okay, party's over, drinks up, everybody like everybody go home. I'm very well aware of that in that aspect. But I also have been kind of like tinkering more with developing a stronger sense of ego, in a healthy sense mm, of like confidence. I guess you could say confidence, but also, like, there is a certain level of ego death, but also ego growth. You have to have that perfect balance in order to succeed in a space like, well, in any entertainment environment. Because you're putting out art, or you're putting out opinions, or you're putting out something. Like, you want to believe and then in you yourself. Also, yeah, you want to believe in yourself, but you also want to kind of have a, um, maybe even a, uh, I don't want to say worship of self, but you want to take yourself seriously. Yeah. Oh, and, for sure. Yeah, for the last two years, I've been doing that a lot less. And I'm kind of actually on some level kind of content with that because now I'm kind of pushing a little bit against it mm -hmm. and trying to find this middle ground where you're not, you know, so timid and so, like, not confident that you're not willing to take your space and take your spot. But at the same time, you know, not so egotistical that, like you said, you're cock blocking your own blessings and stuff. Yes. So... You know, that's kind of what where I've been moving. But um, I think that's a great journey. <laughs> I think that's a very difficult one, too, because, again, it requires like patience and it you have to like let the change happen. So how do you I guess um, how do you deal with the need to be paid? Are you a patient person? Depends on what the situation is. So mm -hmm. if it's like a uh, if it's like. Like I said, with like the the I don't want to say the booty bandit, but like the the, the bed sheets bandit. Yeah. Um, with him, I was patient because it was a. <laughs> I just got <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, with him, I was patient because it was a confrontation. <laughs> so I was very like, okay, what do I do? Because now we're involving like pink eye and stuff like yeah. that. So I was very calm. I was like, okay, where where are we going with this? Oh. But anything <laughs> anything non um. Anything, yeah, anything outside of confrontation, I'm not patient, actually. I'm someone who's very much like, is it done yet? Is it done yet? Is it done yet? Not verbally or like outwardly, but in my head, I'm like a million miles an hour. Is it done yet? Um, what about you? Um, well, I feel like I have a very, patience really is like my, I'm, it is my greatest life lesson. I'll be learning it until the day I die, genuinely. I just, I'm, I sometimes run into loop thoughts of like, you're better than this, make it happen. And I'm like, oh, okay. Like I can control everything. Like it feels like a little bit like a control issue where you're like, why can't I control everything? Why isn't it working on my timeline? 
Okay. And then my mom's voice comes into my head. And she goes, nobody's timeline matters but God's. And I'm like, oh, okay. And so I'm like, what's God's timeline for me? And again, like, I, you know, I grew up religious for a long time. I was like a heart, like I really believed in the Catholicism for a really long time. And mm-hmm. I think that I take a lot of that wisdom into my life now where I'm like, it's not about my time. It is about like God's time or whatever you call it. It's about realizing yeah. like this is the life lesson the universe is teaching me is like, okay, like what a great opportunity to be patient. What a great opportunity mm-hmm. to be disciplined. Like, oh, I want to be disciplined. I want to be this badass. I want to go through training. I want to get hit with a stick on my abs and be like, I can take it. I want to brag about how big my muscles are, but I don't want to learn the discipline to do it. I don't want the patience to mm-hmm. do it. It's like I question myself and I tell myself, is that your ego and your pride telling you you're tougher than you are? Or like, do you have the evidence to back it up? And mm. that evidence is like, it's a, like a circle, right? To get the evidence, I have to be disciplined to be disciplined. I have to actually be motivated to be motivated. I actually know why I'm doing it. To know why I'm doing it, I have mm. to introspect and actually know myself. To know myself, I have to live a life that tells me like, who am I? And informs me of like, oh, remember when you did this? Like, this is mm. why you did this. Or this is why you, you know what I mean? So I think for me, I take it as an opportunity to figure out how it's all connected and how like a decision I made, I've been thinking about this lately, like what decision did I make 12 years ago that brought me here and I didn't even realize it at the time? Or how about the time like I even heard my husband's voice for the first time and all I thought was like, oh, I really like this person and like I really like their brain and like I I really want to talk to them again, not knowing like you're about to move to Europe, you American bitch. Like I live in Europe. I, in my early 20s, during 4th of July, would deck out my car in red, white, and blue, drive through Southern California, raging country songs about America. I cry when I hear people (laughs) sing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, football games, when they're doing the anthem, I cry. I played Post Malone's version of the anthem for my partner. I was like, is this not so beautiful? He's like, all I hear is propaganda. I was like, shh. I was like, I am so, like, American sometimes in my brain that I, like, literally started getting emotional and now i live in europe you know what i'm saying like i just think life is about preparing yourself for your destiny (laughs) Hmm. so like have you ever had your ego or like pride like because like that uh i don't want to say it was completely comprised of ego and pride like my little fist fight in the army because it was definitely an aspect of like There was an aspect of like, look, like I'm not going to have my masculinity tested in here, broken ankle or not. Mm -hmm. Like when you're surrounded by 50 degenerates, you have to like a line has to be drawn somewhere. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like there was an aspect of like pride and ego leading me into something that kind of had to happen. Have you ever had your pride or ego lead you into something where you were like, okay, this was a necessary journey? Because I feel like we oftentimes demonize these two things, but at times they can also open up little lessons. Just a reminder that I'm a YouTuber for a living. Okay, that that answers. That pretty much gives a pretty, it's like the ultimate answer right there. Hey, you guys know who you should listen to? Me. We're, as a YouTuber, I, I, you are literally saying, can I have three to six hours of your time every day? Oh, and that's just the stream. Can I also have three more hours for my clips? Oh, mm. and if you pay for my Patreon, can you also come to my Discord events? Oh, and if you're really dedicated, do you want to talk to me one-on-one? Okay. YouTubers, like, ultimately, we do have to have some fucking part of our brain that thinks we're worth listening to. Facts. Whether we think we're funny or pretty or entertaining. Like, why you and not the other hundred makeup bitches? Because you, for some reason, think your eyeliner is better than other people's eyeliner. Or you think it's more fly or you think like you figured out a formula. I used to, when I was obsessed with like makeup YouTube, oh my God, I would watch how to put on mascara, like a hundred different YouTubers. And my partners at the time would be like, how many of these videos can you watch? I was like, it's not for the mascara, it's for the YouTuber. <laughs> it's their personality. It's their input. Why did I watch that that Fresh and Fit versus H3 three times? Well, I wanted to know Tom's yeah. opinion. Then I wanted to know Papa Gut's opinion. I don't want to see me replay it. And I was like, I'm doing it pretty good. And so like, you know, you're sitting there, you're, you watch people because they're an individual person with an opinion. You want to know when I get a commenter, I doubt myself sometimes, Rashad, I will say, oh, I'm not going to cover that. Like nobody cares. And then people will be like, um, Brittany, everyone else covered it. We need your opinion. Hello. And I'm like, oh, I forget that my audience and people in the audience also are like me. And they're like, hey, we got 10 other opinions, but we need one more. Let's go. 
And I'm like, oh, shit. Right. You know what I mean? Mm. And so I think okay. like ego and pride led me to believe and led my father to believe when he was like, you should start a YouTube channel. Like I just seen, I was like, I just seen, could I be a YouTuber? And he's like, you should be a YouTuber. My dad had enough pride and ego in his daughter. He's like, you could be an entertainer. And I was like, I could, I could be one. Cause I wanted to be a radio host. I was like calling into radio shows all through high school, Disney champ, Disney radio, Disney, my first skateboard, Dragon Ball Z, my first backpack, Dragon Ball Z, my first lunch pail, Dragon Ball Z, like in terms of anime, like, they hooked me up. Okay. I would call in, win all the contests to like a 12-year-old. Okay. Then I got older and I was on talk radio shows all the time. I was like, hi, Rush Limbaugh. I want to tell you something. I think I'm smarter than you. I'm 19. <laughs> and then like I'm sitting there. I'm like, oh, hi, this person. Oh, hi, this person. It's the same thing when I see panelists. I was like, look at us. We all think we're so smart. Like we're all just like little introverts <laughs> who sit on our computers all day and have us are virgins. I love this for us. Like, yeah. And that's ego that brings us here, bro. <laughs> That is true. That is true. My story was not so, uh, <laughs> my way into YouTube was a lot more like luck, like a lot yeah? more like chance based. Yeah. It was like, Did if you... I didn't break my ankle in the arm. Hmm? Oh yeah. Okay. Tell me, tell me, tell me. I'd love to know. Yeah. If I hadn't broken my ankle, I'd say I'd still be in the army until 2020. Seven or Damn. six? Or... You signed up for eight yeah. years? Ten, wait, ten, ten years? So I was supposed to go to college I was so I I did some stupid contract where I was gonna be in, um I think it was eight years. So I probably would have came out in like twenty twenty five or oh, six or something. So, but it was I would have been in for way too long. Looking back now, oh my god! But um, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, it was by chance. I broke my ankle. Um, found a way to come home when the Army National Guard was fighting to keep me there, like tooth and nail. Like you're never coming home. <laughs> Made it home. Went to college. Was sitting in like a, a parking lot at Chipotle, not doing my school work, yeah, not doing anything. Yeah, and I got like a Snapchat text from a high school friend. You want to come do this podcast, bro? And then that was literally just it, just by Shut chance. Up. And then like, so that's I mean, beautiful. I don't know. That's that's kind of like why sometimes I'm like, maybe this is all supposed to be happening because I, I I sometimes like I I do um. What's the word like when you're like eating something you're not supposed to eat or you're like doing something you're not supposed? I do like indulge mm. and like you know like higher power yeah woo -woo thoughts, but yeah that's just my little scenario i but, think that's um, interesting I no i think that first of all i do think you're meant to be in the space one i've noticed that um i take bets on people's careers for funsies that's why my audience knows we check into certain youtubers like yesterday we checked into gabby hannah was like let's see if gabby's changed and we check in and we're going to do that with Rashad. Let's see if Rashad ended up anywhere. Let's see what he did with his life. Like we are going to check. And you know, I'll tell you this one time I, uh, I was struggling in my life in 2012 and I asked the internet for money. It's like a really, it was a really, it was a time. Let me tell you. And the internet came through okay. and I got like uh 10K and one of the, it changed my life. Thank you so much. If you were back watching then it literally transformed my whole life. It brought me here. And one mm -hmm. of the guys gave me a thousand dollars. And he was from Saudi Arabia and he wrote me a note and he said, I can't wait to see what you do with your life. And I will never forget that. I will, I don't even know who this person is. I never like, I just don't even know who this human is. So if they're, you're still in the audience, hello. But when I, that message will be ingrained in my brain forever. I want to, I can't wait to see what you do with your life. And I was like, oh shit. And like a part of me is like, I better do something. And like another part of me, embrace it. Embrace I know. It. And then another part of me is like, I also wonder what people will do with their lives. Like I know, I joke. I know I mention anime a lot, and I know it's so lame, but it's not lame. It's the best thing ever, and only cool kids watch anime, guys. I don't know if you heard. And when I think about anime, and I think about like, why do we fantasize about those stories? Like, oh, if only I was Luffy, man. If only I was Goku. If only I was Vegeta. And I'm like. But aren't we kind of though like a little bit but like without the super saiyan powers like aren't we just like little kids in a village like and like figuring out our lives like aren't we all just like yeah, little, you know what i mean girl. like you know what i mean sasuke over here okay yeah like aren't we all just like living our own little dramas and like and then we're deciding like what to do with them so my brain is like okay what if i did something that i wanted to do for me so then i asked myself like okay if i was like on a desert island what would i do what would i want to do with my life and that's a very hard question to answer. I think it sounds easy, but I think mm -hmm. you'd surprise yourself if you really ask yourself like, okay, it really is just me with everything I know about myself. What do I want to do? 
your family somewhere else. Let's say I put you on a forest or I put you on a desert island or I put you in the middle of the ocean. Like you could do anything. You could do anything with your life. It's like, what would I do with my life? Like what would I want to do? And this like exercise really led me to figuring out like my joy. And once I figured that out, you know, life's easy. Circumstances are tough. Hmm. Okay. That's interesting. You know? Okay. So I don't want to, I don't want to drag you on too long. So you always let me know whenever, you know, things need to wrap up. Soon, but, soon ish. It's 12, um, it's almost 1230 here. So soon ish for me, maybe I don't want to give a time limit, but like sooner rather than later. Okay. But you tell me if there's um, anything more on your mind, I want to hear it. <clears throat> hmm. Cause the flow has been good. People have been loving it and I appreciate you guys staying this long to watch. And I put, I put, the link to your channel in the chat, but I'm going to put it in again just oh. in case you guys forgot. I mean, I appreciate that always. Yeah, go know. subscribe. Thank you. I would go live, but as you better than anyone else would know. <laughs> Tech. You know what I'm saying? Struggles. Well, yeah. it's the lack of a second monitor. Once I have that, I'll it's be good hard. to go. It's very hard without multiple mm -hmm. monitors. Like genuinely, like that, I, until I got a third one even, I was like, <sighs> like the whole thing is covered. Like every single screen has a thousand things open on it. How do you feel about the combo? Mm -hmm. This one was really good. Like, yeah. I thought the last one was good, but this one was a lot. This one was, like, way better. Um, yeah, I agree. I, I, it's, I'm kind of I'm kind of glad we didn't cover, like, the Aiden one, because... Oh, my God. The, uh, the Aiden him. Tate situation, because that was... That was... I actually want to watch you solo talk about that. Bro. Um, He's just... Do you think you could do it? Yeah, maybe. I, you know, I thought about covering it, and then I was like... I don't know, but there's some there's an Aiden thing that I do want to cover, so maybe I'll just mention it like as I do the video. But I, you know, it's interesting to see somebody that just like feels so little brother to me play with big kids who are making very big decisions about their life. Mm -hmm. like Andrew Tate is not in the like Aiden is not in league with Andrew Tate. Like they're not in the same league. They're not playing the same games. Mm -hmm. But I think Andrew I mean, Aiden is convinced he wants to. And I think he's too good for those games. Oh, you think he's like a good, like a, a he's too good of a person to be like involved in that? Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people take that the wrong way. Yeah, you well, know, a lot of people are like, what are you trying to say? Like, you know what I mean? Like for some people, that's a little, but I understand what you're saying. Like Aiden is definitely, I think he's just having a read the room problem because people say he's dumb, but I just think it's a little bit too much like, uh, what's that fucking word they use? Like, it, 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 too much he's et eternally on like he's just online so much that he's kind of like forgot like you do know your buddy's fighting charges right um but yeah i actually do look forward to watching you cover that one solo because yeah. <laughs> i feel like it'll be a funny one to talk about is there anything you were curious about um i feel like you did really good actually one thing i'll i'll take note of that you told me about the first time around and i felt like you were doing it this time around which was actually really nice um, is one, you ask really good questions. Two, mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if you were doing that to switch the attention on to me and off of you, or if you were <laughs> doing it because you are just considerate and don't want to like take up the whole space. It's very much paranoia about like being like too like, like, am I like, I'm on this person's show. I'm talking a lot. Like. And plus, like, I've always noticed that it always feels good when someone is like, well, what about you? You yeah. know what I mean? So, like, I've, I've built up a habit of always trying to, like, turn it back to someone like, hey, like, what do you think? Or, like, how does this relate to you? Yeah. But, no, that's actually a good idea. Whenever I find myself in a tight one and I need to, like, <laughs> and I need to escape. Yeah, that's a good idea. But, no, I, I watch, um, I tune into your lives, like, every other day. Like, okay. I'll be, like lifting and i'll be tuning into your lives so it was always like um a point of like purpose to be like okay like what does britney think about this or like sure. what's because you um you're open about a pretty good amount of your personal life mm -hmm. and i'm always curious about like okay like what part of that story is affecting your beliefs today mm. or is it completely disconnected from trauma is it just completely just like independent of any sort of experience I'm always curious about that. Yeah. But it's funny that you're kind of like, um, that you're like, you're kind of like me in a way, in a way. You're kind of like me in a sense where you're like, what was that? Mm. 
Well, I think it's twofold. One, I think you do. I think that's why we get along right now. I, I think the theory I have is like, why do I get along with Rashad? I, one, I think like you ask really good questions, which means you're thinking. Like good questions don't I come out of anywhere, think. right? Like that means you're thinking yeah. and you're and you're listening. So the way you answer questions is like, even if like, <clears throat> sometimes I'll think like, oh God, I just spaced right there. What? And then I'm like, oh God. And then I'm like, wait, what happened? And then I like context my clue back myself back to the conversation. Cause I'm not gonna lie. Reading chat distracts the fuck out of me. But then I'm like, okay, I hope the conversation's going good. But then I'm like, oh, but he heard me cause he responded correctly, which tells me like we're on the same page and like, okay. And like, I'm always doing math in my, <laughs> and it's just, like, I think it's a part of also being a streamer and then you're trying to do multiple things. And then you're also like worried you're not being, and then as the host, I'm like, oh my God, is he talking enough? Did I give him enough space? Like, did I ask, should I ask him questions course, back? Yeah. And then it's like, you know, that kind of stuff. So you worry, like, I think the worries also comes from a place of like consideration, but also like, you don't want someone to feel like, what am I doing here? Oh yeah. I mean, even with me, like, even though I'm the guest, I'm always like, okay, like how do I make sure the host is not like, oh, this guy, <laughs> like, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, where are we yeah. going with this? You have um, such good energy. Like you seem like a very, like a good person, you know, yeah, I would be that. very disappointed if I heard some things about you that like would make me go, not Rashad too, man. Not him too, bro. So you better keep <laughs> oh, it up, bro. God. My audience likes you right now. Don't you turn Sneeko on us or nothing like that. That is crazy. You know, I try to keep my nose out of trouble. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I try That's true. To, I do try to, you know, have the most what, who, when. <laughs> and just, that's I try, try to be like that as much as possible. So, yeah, um, yeah. I like the conversation. I thought it good. was really, really good. Good. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm always going to be, like, tuning in and watching and shit like I that. I appreciate to see. that. So I put in a personal request to, to hear you talk about Aiden Ross possibly getting Tate arrested. Noted. Noted. So, I will tell you this. Mm -hmm. One last thing. Um, You remember when we talked about growing old and you being 80? Yeah. Okay. You know how I want to be a grandma that makes bread for kids, you know, before school and stuff like that? Yeah. I also kind of want to be on OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> I also, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I also kind of want to be the old lady who's f like just flopping them out. You know, do your tits hang low? Do they wobble to and fro? Can you tie them in a knot? Can you tie them in a bow? You know, I just kind of want to let them hang loose, you know? <laughs> so, you know, you might not be looking forward to getting old, but I'm just going to, you know, remind you. That if you get old, you could be the old guy on stream, bro. Have you seen that old guy who plays shooter games? Who plays like first person shooters? You're not convincing me to do I this. I love okay? him, bro. I am going to be dead. Uh, I will not bro. be You're seeing younger any than me. Britney you gotta sign. Stay around long enough to I see will, my flopping no. tits. Listen to me. Granny fans. Yes, chat. Granny fans. Yo. Yo. In Jesus' name, <laughs> I don't even believe in Jesus, but like only in Jesus' grands, name. Only grands? Oh, my chat's funny, bro. You guys are funny, bro. Nah, oh, nah, oh, nah, nah. Mm -mm. No, saying, that is Rashad, the craziest. There's so many reasons to grow old. There's we went so from many talking about making bread old. for these kids. That's so my day only job. Grands? My day job, my night job. You know, I just want to be. When these kids old. get, when I they get the, when they, when they get the bread from you and they ask you about the shit on the internet, what are you gonna say? Mm -hmm. I'll I'm be dead, say, so I won't know. I'm but... gonna say that's what a human body looks like, and that's what you're gonna look like in 80 years too, bitch. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say that's how God made me, and to dust to dust, okay, dust to dust. <laughs> nah. <laughs> I'm just saying, this I can't wait to see you old. I can't wait crazy. to be an 80 year old grandma. I'm gonna Rashad. I'm gonna nah, be like, yo, nah, let's see for shots online. Let's see for shots online. Uh oh, Brittany's frozen. <laughs> then we can okay. head out. But is there anything like you want to tell chat? No. Oh no, okay. just I guess bye chat. I mean, yeah. What else yeah. to say? Like, yeah, okay. Great talk, by the way. Good Still. talk. Great talk. Mm -hmm. I will link your channel down below, and hit me up anytime you want to collab. My belly's being fed and I'm okay I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth like
Jesus. 